Welcome back, everyone, to the Knights of Last Call. I am the Game Master of the Knights, Derek Melinda, uh, joined as always by Bob, Nick, Matt, and Tim. Fellas, how you doing? All right. Good, good. Well, welcome, everybody, and um, to another exciting episode of Rise of the Rune Lords. We, of course, are a uh, Pathfinder 2 uh, adventure path that is trying to make our way through a conversion of Rise of the Rune Lords, uh, a uh, adventure path that was written for third edition, uh, three point five edition, um, a long time ago. Oh no, they can't hear Tim. Tim, uh, you, you should be able to now. Yes. Okay, all right, there we go. Um, so last time uh, that we played uh, our adventure, the group had traveled back from Storval Deep a huge Thessalonian dam and uh, had stopped the machinations of a um, marauding band of ogres from destroying the dam, releasing the flood waters and destroying the small backwater village of Turtleback Ferry. The group has done a lot for Turtleback Ferry to say the least, yeah. <laughs> but they, they have, really lear- <laughs> but they have learned that uh, the, the, events occurring at Turtleback Ferry are just uh, a, uh, oh, well, there we go. Your boy Kyle boy tip Kyle tip $10. This goes out to Derek, <laughs> the greatest GM in all the land. Thank you, your boy Kyle. Greatest GM uh-huh. in the land, according to your boy Kyle. Thank you, your boy Kyle. We appreciate it. Um, and your boy Kyle started off, off with a tip. So real quick, down below in the description, you'll see some of our house rules as well as some of our stranger and more esoteric rules around tipping. You see, we want you to be part of the action. And so part of our live stream is all about using your tips to, well, Throw your money around, throw your weight around. You can tip, and when you tip, you can go ahead and specify whether you want to tip just to the channel in general, in which case the Wheel of Destiny will fill up. And when the Wheel of Destiny fills up, something interesting and random will challenge the players with maybe a uh, a difficult decision or a heartfelt role-playing moment or maybe an interesting conundrum. It's random. I don't control it, and it really challenges both the group and me as a uh, game master. Additionally, you can tip directly to your favorite player. This is going to give them hero points. And of course, in the doobly-doo below, you can read all about what my hero points do in Pathfinder 2. They are supercharged. They have been like this long before we ever went live. Uh, But now you have the ability to award them to the hero that you think is doing the best. And, And if you're feeling particularly vindictive or evil... You can also tip to the Game Master, to Derek, as your boy Kyle just did. And that is going to slowly fill up my chart, um, which will, of course, uh, get us to the point where we'll spin. Anonymous tipped $25 for the Wheel of Destiny. Oh, son, Did you know you can choose between Butterfly and oh, Pegasus Anonymous. Wings they just, and Pony They were just Finder. messing with the, uh, the Russian wow, banks. that is quite they, the donation. Oh. They're us 25 bucks. Well, thank you very, very much. Um, I am going to turn off the text-to-speech. So... Group, keep the chat uh, entertained while I do that. Oh. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Knights of Last Golf. Oh, God. Can we, no, can we, put, up a, no. can we put up a poll that would make Bob wear his beard mask the entire game? <laughs> <laughs> it's so hot in that thing. I can't. I mean, I like uh, wearing it, but then it's. Open it's, the windows, baby. You got it. It's all right. It's wintertime. And then the next <laughs> poll should I just accept that uh, I now have a familiar and let the cat sit on my face during the stream since she won't leave it alone? I can see that. <laughs> also, man, it looks my like goodness. your camera keeps auto focusing. It keeps. Yeah, uh, I, th- I, it, it, yeah, I tr- tried something new today. I can switch it. Um, just to let you know. If we'd like, I could take a. a, a oh, that was Ben that tip. Whoa! Twenty-five to each nod. Each nod. <laughs> That is a one hundred dollar oh. tip Whoa. from Pawn No Longer with a twenty five dollar wow. tip to every a single night. I'd Thank like to know you. What, uh, nice. To oh what my piece, gosh. To what chess piece Pawn No Longer upgraded? I think Pawn No Longer is a king. That's all I've got to say. <laughs> that checks out to me. All right, so that Absolutely. that is wow. a, yeah, that is a, a lot of stuff going on there all at once. Uh, that means that immediately our Wheel of Destiny is filled up, of course, um, and of course each hero what, that is good. You? No, no, the no. Wheel of Destiny, not the Wheel oh. of Pain. Wheel, wheel of, of Destiny, Destiny, not the Wheel Ooh. of Pain. Yeah. Uh, all right, we're all right. We're all right. And Robert Kemp with a super chat. Start right. one early for Burl. Gnomes of the world stick together. <laughs> Uh, Gnomes unite. You know, um, I'm thinking a lot of disrespect because I'm only three foot three, but I like it. 
Um, yeah. All right. Wow. Well, okay. So what I was trying to say before everybody started throwing money at us, thank you so much, um, is I, the GM, can use my points to spin on the wheel of pain. It's a wheel of really nasty, horrible, evil stuff. Uh, some of it is bad. Some of it is really bad. And I'm not going to lie. Uh, at least three of them are, I believe, basically TPKers. Now, granted, the party does have their hero points, uh, which are very, very powerful. But, uh, you know, Pathfinder math is very tight in this system and you, you can't mess around too much uh, or it'll get away from you. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's pretty crazy. Um, all right. Uh, I'm assuming we will uh, probably deal with these hero points once we get into the, the game proper. Is is that a, is that a reasonable assumption there? Uh by the way, joining us for the nights is our is our audio producer. That would be uh, Mr. Aaron Smith, aka William Brandis, uh, in the chat. Um, yeah, I'll be adding the points once we're in the game because everyone likes the sound effect and seeing the little <laughs> pop up. Okay, <laughs> all right, there we go. Great, fair enough. Um, so yeah, so as uh, as you tip, the heroes will get hero points. I will get villain points, and the wheel of destiny will fill up. So, um, you know, there we go. Um, all right, well. As I was saying, the group made their way back to the small town uh, of, of Turtleback Ferry. And inside Turtleback Ferry, the group um, discovered that the snows had come early and that the driving rain seemed to have almost stopped overnight. And that night they learned why. For as welcome of a respite as it was to return to Turtleback Ferry, the group learned from Jackadros, the sole surviving member of the Order of Black Arrows, that things were even worse than they had hoped or seemed. It turns out that all of the machinations of the Krieg clan ogre were but the beginning of something far more terrible. The giants of the Storvol Plateau were moving to war. And they had moved to the Hook Mountain, the ancestral headquarters and stronghold deep within the Hook Mountains, home of the Krieg clan, to begin preparing and arming for that war, using the ogres of the Krieg clan to forge out weapons and armor for the new army of giants that would soon descend upon the unsuspecting lands of Varicia. This harkened back to Escanor's vision from Io Medei, that originally uh, drove him to join the knights in their quest, learning that the small actions in Sandpoint were but the beginnings of a much larger com becoming. That night, as the heroes prepared to rest and make their decisions about how to approach this new threat, they were visited by horrific and horrible dreams. The arcane skill of Gwildor Stormcaller was able to identify this as a nightmare spell. And from the horrific visions of three horrid, wicked hags, evil crone women that have little to do with humans, but are all actually fiendish, evil creatures, had joined together in a covey. The famed three sisters, the hags of the hook, apparently had now thrown their lot in with the forces of Barl Breakbones and the ogres of the Krieg clan. They were the ones responsible for the deluge of weather and now seem to be responsible for the driving blizzard. So as we left off, or rather as we start our, our session, each of the knights has been visited by a powerful and potent nightmare spell. Now, this nightmare spell could potentially uh, be a problem uh, for both recovering their, uh, their stamina and their strength, as well as their... Uh, uh, much needed resolve, which of course in my game is used to restore their uh, stamina and hit points. All right. I don't know if this will work. Can I paste this here? No, apparently not. Okay. Oh, maybe I can. Oh, it's nightmares on there. Yeah. Something there, popped up. There we go. All right. So as morning awakes, I need each of you to make a will save. Okay. The DC is 28. Come on, baby. Gwildor wants a oh, night's sleep. No problem. All right, we got... Hey. <laughs> with, a, with a 37, I, I slept solidly through the night. Rolled uh, a nat oh. 20. All right, a little, a little so rough what are the results? Uh, I'll start critical fail. All right, Asius, you received a critical failure and you experienced horrific and horrible nightmares. You awakened with the fatigued condition 
Okay. And you are drained too. Oh. So go ahead and throw those on your sheet. Uh, in addition, you recover no resolve. Okay. All right. Uh, Escanor, how'd you do? Uh, nat 20 and a 38, so double crit success. <laughs> All right. So you got the net, you got the, the rare and vaunted double crit success. So Escanor, so strong and pure is your will. Uh, Escanor, when the, when the hags visit your dreams, uh, you suffer no effects and you actually are immune for one week. So, so tell us what, what was that like when the hags came and visited you in the night? They started to come towards me, but then a bright light of my deity, Iomede, came forth and banished them back. Yes, yes, exactly. So there's like a divine shield, and they are actually uh, incapable of sending you further nightmares for a week because of how powerful you are. Yeah, they sent them into my room. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're like, ah, let's, just go get, let's go get the easy room. barbarian. He's just drunk already and easy to, he's just easy prey. Um, all right, Gwildor Stormcaller, what was your result? Uh, I got a regular failure. You just got a regular failure. All yeah. right. Well, Plain that old failure. So you are going to awaken fatigued Gwildor. Yes, I have and, already added the effect to myself. Um, but that means that you are going to uh, only get back one um, point of resolve. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Yesterday was a long day indeed. <laughs> only doubled down on by the horrible nightmares of me being taken over by an otherworldly force and probably easily murdering my party, at least in the nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. I exactly. mean, it's something to say that you only, you know, failed, you know, only got one resolve back after getting over that crazy Doom 3 that you were messing uh, around well, with. I'm not over it. I well, I, I mean, still <laughs> very Doom. A small little Doom <laughs> 1 put me into a tizzy. <laughs> um, also, uh, I was just informed that our our victory point bars or experience point or uh, hero point bars are not currently updating right now. So I will fix those on the break, but rest assured uh, your, your hero, your tips are building up to hero points and the like, and we will uh, we'll just fix. yell at yell at William Brandis in the chat. He'll let you know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you have any questions, ask William Brandis and lastly, uh, exclamation mark, Will Brandis. Thank um, you. <laughs> oh, there we go. I just got one. And last but not least uh, we've got, Burlington. Matt, what did Burl get? Uh, a 37, but I forget what the DC was. Uh, the DC was 28, so not a critical success. Um, so we actually managed to get uh, everybody uh, with all oh, the different oh, degrees. Right. Yes. So Matt, you suffer no ill effects, but you are not immune for a week. Uh, you can be visited by hero, uh, by the visual nightmares, the yeah. horrible visions of nightmares uh, tomorrow night. All right. And so, I do, so I do get my resolve though? Uh, you do get all your resolve back, yes. Excellent. Does Lucky have to make a save? He does not. Uh, they cannot really send them. And uh, currently, Smith is uh, putting uh, everybody's hero points into the uh, into the thing. So if you guys make sure you update those on your sheet. Um, all right. So, well, here everybody everybody's getting their hero points. We need like a way to do this in bulk. Yeah. <laughs> bing, 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 bing. No, just on the yeah, for real. just one thing. Oh, um, yours has got a nice sound effect. Yeah, like the yeah, Escanor gets five. <laughs> yeah, just... We, I mean, I'll we, take them. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, when we designed the system, we didn't think everybody was going to be tipping so much. So that's part of the issue. All right, so, gentlemen, you awaken... Uh, some of you, uh, all of you, obviously, aware of what has transpired the night before. Uh, but while Burl, and especially Escanor, seem to have recovered nicely... Um, Oh, that was great, guys. You guys sleep good? Gwildor and Asius are not so lucky. They are um, fatigued. And uh, if you're not familiar with what the fatigue condition means, uh, it means that you cannot um, uh, you cannot uh, uh, take exploration actions. You basically are just too tired. Um, <laughs> We've all been there. <laughs> so no, like, lock picking? <laughs> uh, depends on the lock picking. <laughs> Um, all right. I also apparently have the but fatigue also goes as minus one stats penalty to AC and saving throws. Right. So Gosh. it is, it, 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 it's a painful, it's a pain in the butt. So you, uh, did not receive, you did not get a good night's sleep and you obviously all are familiar with the fact that, you know, that what happened to you was fairly unnatural, but it is only Gwildor who truly understands the sort of, uh, magical implications of exactly what happened. So. 
The next morning, you awaken at the. Uh, you guys remember the name of the the uh, the inn? Like the turtle. It, the... it was called the the inn. The turtle oh. soup inn or something. <laughs> turtle soup, turtle shell inn or something like that. <laughs> oh, I don't have that notebook in front of me. Oh wow! All uh, right, I have that note. <laughs> All right, so. Um, Someone in the chat will remember. All right. Well, um, what uh, what would you guys like to do? At this point, just call it. Let's call it. Let's just, <laughs> let's just go home. Listen, listen, guys. I'm getting kind of pissed. <laughs> Yesterday, I almost let this well or the damn contraption suck my soul out. And now some hags are sending me goddamn nightmares. <laughs> We're going to go deal with it. I'm right well, there with you. Let's well, go. before we do anything crazy, I'm a little tired, but should we like uh, use some of these items that we found? Or do you want to oh, go got, deal with the hags now? I got, I got my Biden. I'm ready to go. <laughs> yeah, we have a nice resilient ruin, and none of me and Burl don't seem to be the best defensively. Uh, Defense, oh, what's thank that? you. Neuro Lancer <laughs> with a $15 tip, and that means another hero point for our boy Asius. Yes. Oh, I'm, nice. stocking, I'm stocking up. Maybe we should just go and fight the Giants. I mean, I'm ready, <laughs> I'm ready now. Yeah. <laughs> Suddenly, no, how this changed. Um, Older woke you, up and saw the weather, and uh, yeah, he's he's prepared. He's got two fifth level Endure Elements prepared. So mm. uh, I am messing around today. Gildor is, Gildor is upset about his lack of sleep. <laughs> uh, do yeah. we get any uh, negatives to the check for imbuing the or um, craft or doing the resilient rune to our armor. No, that's just a craft check, but that's technically a downtime action, so fatigue doesn't actually affect okay. that apparently. But but I will say obviously that you know if you guys uh, you know take a day here in town, um, you know those nightmares could get worse and continue to grow and 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 drive into you, and then eventually. Uh, even though the spell says that, you know, this is a GM prerogative. It could start to to do worse things, doomed, doomful things. Oh, oh also, also, Gwildor, you. Yeah. Oh, you failed the save. Yeah. OK, your doom stays at three. Oh. Yeah. All right. Does so mine stay at one. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> by the way, by the way, uh, for record of note, uh, after last week's episode, Asius is starting off the session at doomed one and Gwildor is starting off the session at doomed three. Yeah, Matt, what were you saying? Uh, where is Lucky? Did they not allow him into the town? <laughs> I like to yeah. think that when you're in town, he goes off and, and rampages in the woods and just badgers it up. So. <laughs> All right, I'll, 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 I mean, I, I hear can't telepathically, right? So you can just call them when we're ready to go. That's so. true, Matt. You don't even yeah. necessarily have, you're not even here right now. You're warging into Lucky and just experiencing yeah. the thrill of the hunt. <laughs> um. So yeah, I. it's up to you guys, but I would prefer before we go fight anything that we we craft this rune into the armor. <laughs> okay. Whose armor? Um, into yours armor? Or are you I, going? I would selfishly say me, but it can also go to Burl. I don't think you guys need it. I think it's me or Burl. Oh yeah, definitely not me. I agree. Burlington, or do you need it so desperately that you'd want me to craft on you? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it gives me plus one AC. No. Oh. It it uh, it oh. it Bob. helps with the Bob. Do you know what it does? It uh, helps with the reflex save, doesn't it? No, <laughs> it gives oh, you. Oh, a... is that resilient? <laughs> uh, it's a it... plus one item bonus to all of your saves. Oh, What's the one yeah. that gives you the. Uh, Reflex save bonus. Uh, I don't think there is one, so that's cool. There is something with armor that lets you do that. I did it at a higher level. All right. Well, I no, haven't done it in a long time. If anybody knows what Bob is talking about, you can let us know. But otherwise, um, yeah, so you can make a craft check to uh, put the rune into, um, uh, transfer the rune into Burl's, basically his robe. Perfect. Yeah. So, so I uh, get a plus one to all my saves. Well, after I pass this, at, uh, yes. thirty-five. You oh, that is your armor. Yeah, that is uh, that is a success. All right, so Bob, you are able to transfer the runes, and it is a fundamental rune, so you are able to do that. Um, uh, it only takes one day instead of the usual four days, and it costs ten percent of the runes price, which is let's see. You have it on you, don't you, uh, Nick? Uh, I can look it up. It on. is 34. Okay. It is 340 gold. So it is 34 gold for the uh, special uh, components that you need in order to transfer this rune. 
I assume Burlington that comes from your pouch. Yeah, since I'll it's pay going it. to you. Uh, yeah, thirty-four. You got it. My All skills right. aren't free. <laughs> I understand it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, the money goes to the bank. <laughs> it goes Gold. to the shops that you had to buy the yep. uh, the materials from. Thirty-four, and then I just add. Do I just do a modifier? No, there is a specific thing on your. Uh, I'll do it for you. Okay. If yeah. <laughs> It, it's basically I, going to your clothing explorer, or your your armor itself, and editing it to give it the plus one. Uh, oh, actually, it is easier if you do it to yourself, Matt. Um, okay. Sorry, so say again then. It is easier if you do it to yourself. Yep. So go to the armor on your third tab, is your equipment, your inventory, and go to the third, uh, the one with the pen, which is the edit button. Yep. And you should be able to add um under the details where it says uh resilient rune you can put that in right that's it's just a resilient rune right yep yep so on the details mat there's like six from the top bottom it says resilient rune you just pick yep resilient rune and then hit x let sure me just, let me just see if that's saved yep that's good all right you and that'll just give you a plus one to all your saves all right so Boom. now that that is complete um, what would you, while Azius is affixing the rune, is there anything that anybody else would like to do in town this day? Go around uh, and, oh, go on, bro. Uh, although, you know, there is, there is urgent, uh, you know, things that we should consider. Yes. Uh, are there any, uh, games of chance, uh, around town? Well, you remember the town was recently almost flooded and destroyed and the black maga destroyed almost everybody. And the biggest, gambling den of vice uh was secretly an evil front for an ancient organization trying to bring about the end of the world and then it sunk out in the middle of the uh lake in order to hide up all of the evidence so no dang it i got this, <laughs> this gold's burning a hole in my pocket all right fine all right anybody else go around um, and uh see if we can't gather any more information if they've heard anything uh any other information coming from the about the giants? Yeah, Nick, why don't you go ahead and make a diplomacy check, a gather information check? Where is my diplomacy? It's deception. That's not it. There you are. Uh, the DC here is going to be Nat One. <laughs> That's the DC. We passed. Uh, <laughs> I pass with flying colors. Success. So Escanor, of course, obviously you are a beloved champion and a be uh, of I uh, of Iomade, and you are of course revered in this town. So it's not so much that you failed, is that the town has just past the point of breaking. Um, and the few people in town, honestly, who knew much or if anything about the giants were the order of black arrows and they have been killed to a man. Well, two men, one of whom cave and wind strike turns out as a traitor, uh, and has, you know, fled North. And then the other one, Jack Adros, spoke with you yesterday. So, right. um, uh, you know, it's, it's more just that this town has, has little to know of anything. In fact, actually, based on your, if you remember from last time, uh, the mayor is currently in the process of getting everybody packed up Ow. to evacuate the town. So there isn't really a whole lot of people here who are really willing or able to talk to you. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. At least they didn't lie to me, guys. <laughs> no information is better than false information. <laughs> they tell you, oh, those giants. Well, I hear they're a big pushover and don't, <laughs> they're weak to water. Um, <laughs> All right. Well, if there's nothing else, um, you guys can uh, kind of start figuring out what is your plan? What are you guys going to do here? I mean, I think we have to kind of go back up, I, I guess, higher into the uh, the plains there to to see what's going on, see if we yeah. can't discover their their stronghold. Or, so they're not at the uh, they're not at the Fort Rannick. They weren't at the dam. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they got to have some other base of operations where their forges are located because if they're making weapons and armor they got to have some place to do that at it's not a it's easy thing high to do ground. on the road so yeah we know they uh, like live up in the mountains so yeah. we've got to go to that i can't remember the region name i'm looking for the map and foundry but uh, party resources is probably there no <laughs> party resources <laughs> probably there no um <laughs> thank you steven for the ten dollar tip appreciate that um, and we will be spinning the wheel of destiny once we get underway. So we, we are, owed, we are owed that. So, yes. 
All right. So uh, in that case, any uh, special preparations or do you guys want to get underway today or do you want to? Let's head on. I, I say we just we head on out. Time is of the essence. We need to stop this uh, this army of giants before they get too uh, too well armed and too well prepared and we can't stop them. I agree. Uh, Gildor is ready to go. He's going to put uh, fifth level endure elements on himself and Burl, and then uh, he's going to use a staff of abjuration to put second level endure elements on Azius and Escanor. Cool. All right, yeah. that's great. All right, well, the journey will take you at least several days, if not a week. Um, and I will continue to do that every day, um, especially as the nature of this horrific. Um, and not only are they traveling up into the mountains, but also the 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 winter is upon you. And even in a normal set of circumstances, uh, this would be brutal, unfair, and un unforgiving. But magically driven by the hags of the hook, uh, this is a horrific and horrible set of blizzard-like conditions. Um, it is, in fact, extreme uh, conditions. So the... Uh, the climate has become ex powerful. The winds are howling. Visibility is minimal. Um, and this is actually extreme cold. Now, nice. Tim, Tim, you have cast Endure Elements. What level? Fifth level on Burl and myself, which does protect us from extreme levels of cold and heat. Okay. I was only able to protect uh, Asius and Burl, or Asius and Escanor from severe cold. Okay. So... A A Asius and Escort, you guys are still going to be affected by this cold. Um, not as badly. Yep. I'm going to take a blanket from the end and kind of. <laughs> oh, I assume that you up. are, that you're not just instantly <laughs> dead. Um, so I am assuming that you are already doing that. So we're walking along and they're shivering, and I'm going to take off my second pair of gloves and say, here, fellas, you can put these on. Right, exactly. Uh, yes, magically protected as you are. And Tim, uh, how long does that last? Uh, until I prepare my spells again. Right. And by the way, you don't have to, uh, you can actually just choose not to prepare those slots oh. and just stays locked out. And then you are, uh, you know, you're totally good to go. I, I will do that. Then. All right. Um, awesome. I assume on one of the camping days, I can, um, invest the Aeon stone. Oh yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. We're in the Rockies. <laughs> All right. Um, so that's me. All right. Is that uh, is that from uh, Dumb and Dumber? Yeah, th he has two pairs of gloves, and he's complaining. <laughs> Harry's complaining how he's cold. He's like, "Here, you my second pair of gloves." He's like, "You had these the whole time." He's like, "Yeah, we're in the Rockies." <laughs> All right. So do you have do you have to hold this stone? Um, Bob. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? What? Uh, <sighs> It won't let me wear it. Oh, oh there it goes. Okay. Uh, it says you can hold it. Uh, yeah. Bob, Bob, oh, not, Bob, not as well versed in, in, in Dungeons and Dragons lore as the rest of well, us. I know. I know this. Doesn't it float above my head? It actually orbits a rub up yes. your head. Well, I know this from our other campaign. All right. So. Uh, you begin making your trek up towards the Hook Mountain. And Ooh. to do so, um, we are going to uh, have to uh, uh, brave the harsh, horrible conditions of the Hook Mountain. Now, a couple of things. Um, in order to reach the clan hold, you must first, you must fill up this uh, clock on the left, which has uh, eight segments. But okay. along the way, um, I don't think it has eight. I'm sorry, 10 segments. Um, and, but along the way, uh, you are going to be wary of losing um, provisions, warmth, morale, and time. Now, the good news is that Burl and, as, uh, and uh, Gwildor basically do not have to worry about warmth because of the powerful magic of Gwildor Stormcaller. However, uh, morale and time will be uh, and provisions will be important. Now, provisions is just not only just your food, but it's also supplies that you brought for the journey. Now, I'm starting this at the lowest it could possibly be because none of you made any preparations for any sort of uh, overland journey or food or any of that. So, uh, you well, I, Gwildor has create food, and uh, you know, knowing this is coming up, we'll memorize it every day. All right. Uh, um, 
which will allow me to feed. Um, trying to find it in the wall of text. It's so easy in the heightened, but then. <laughs> now, the issue here, Tim, is going to be six medium. Right. Uh, that's fine. And you're good for today. But remember, because of the nightmares that are visioning you each night when you sleep, you potentially mm -hmm. could lose your nightmare and then you might not be able to prepare spells the next day. Okay. So that is that is the the, the uh, condition you have. So if any one of these um, clocks reaches a zero, uh, something bad may happen. Oh, boy. Gotcha. All right. So you guys make your way up into the hinterlands north of the Skull River up to the point where Fort Rannick sort of stands a shadowy burnt out hall, a husk of its once former glory. Down here, trees are still abundant, and the snow is a steady and constant presence. The wind howls out of the north, and above you stands the towering range of the Storville Mountains, which ring the Storville Deep Plateau. And somewhere deep within them, completely unknown to you where, in a vast mountain range, is one mountain, the Hook Mountain. And in it is a narrow secret cleft, which is the headquarters of the Krieg clan. So you need to find it and get there. Now, I have no idea how you're going to do that because you're literally just walking out into an area the size of, I don't know, Vermont and looking for <laughs> one mountain. So uh, not even one mountain, like one thing on a mountain. So I guess good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, um, we're going to run this uh, kind of in rough, roughly, you know, everybody gets a, an action. Um, and basically each day you're going to get two actions, one in the morning, sort of one in the afternoon. And then I'm going to presume that as night falls and weariness takes you, um, you're going to have to try to, uh, you know, do your best to stay warm and find a place that you can at least try to get in some comfort. Um, but the wind and the weather are only going to get worse as you go up the hill. And of course, in the back of your mind, you can hear the laughing and shattering echoes. Well, except for Nick of the trio of the hags of the hook who are sending down their magical uh, insinations into your mind uh, each night. All right. These so, exploration actions that we get every, you get two of? No, these are downtime okay. actions because okay. they take <laughs> place gonna... over the course. <laughs> they take place over the course of many hours. So, okay. All right. Well, you guys stand at the foot of a mighty range of mountains. You have no idea where you're going. You have no idea how to get there and you are not prepared for the journey. So, mm. <laughs> Rescue for success, but, guys. We got this. But you're really strong. Uh, so, what would you guys like to do? I would like to search around for any tracks that have been going this way um, using survival. Good idea. I have my tracker goggles. Okay. Which D give me a, a plus one. All right. Specifically to finding tracks? If, if it's for finding tracks. All right, Bob, the DC for this action would or a sense direction. That's the, the two that it does. OK, well, the DC for this action would normally be 27, Bob, but because of the snowfall that has been falling pretty heavily over the last few days since the dam, uh, the DC is going to be higher. It is going to be. 30. OK, I roll, Bob. Come on. OK. <laughs> He All right. Around and walks away. <laughs> yes. All right. The snow looks like it's covered up any tracks that have been here. All right. Well, actually, no. You rolled a nat one, Bob. So I know nothing about tracks. Uh, but you think you do. Egg, that's actually exactly right, <laughs> Matt. So it's, so it's even worse than you thought. Um, so what ends up happening is Bob ends up uh, wasting a good amount of your time. And um, Bob, uh, you guys end up eating up. Uh, some valuable time as you spend almost the entire first day following what is essentially a, uh, a, a, not a pair of tracks. Um, and, and Bob, uh, Asius was so convinced that he had found it. He, he kept going like, he's like, it's giants. Oh, I can these are my tracks. <laughs> <laughs> I knew we've been going in circles. He's just like giants. I can smell them. And then you're like, wait, you can smell it. What? It's snow. Yeah. It's, it, and it's just you with no soap. So, all right. So no progress is made and you guys lose some precious time. And remember anytime one of these clocks oh, gets to geez. bottom uh, or gets to the, uh, gets to the uh, empty, uh, something bad might happen to you guys. Well, will happen to you guys. 
Um, all right. So um, as we get out here, though, uh, as you guys are sort of spending the first half of your day following Asius's expert lead, um, let us see what Destiny, not the Warhammer, uh, has in store for the uh, for the folks at home or for the folks here. Not, I guess, for everybody. For all the folks. Um, I do not know where. <laughs> First uh, into the bar or travel song. <laughs> um, get drunk again and gain stupefy too. Oh my! Why, why God. can't it? Why uh, can't it be both? Why can't we get drunk and burst and? All right. Well, it wouldn't be the nights of last call if it wasn't time for some. Um, if it wasn't time uh, for Derek, some. They're saying to uh, move Gildor's uh, Gildor shoot. Oh, okay. What happened to my sheet? <laughs> well, it's, it, it's Derek has uh, clicked on it, zoomed in. Oh, uh, interesting. interesting. Can you close it? Uh, no. Oh, that's a new feature. I closed mine. Did it close for you? Uh, actually. Oh, I, oh, I don't know what. Is, the, is it Uwati the Watcher? Uh, Uwatu the uh, Watcher. The Watcher. Uwatu the Watcher. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it looks like everything kind of got screwed up here. Hold a sec. Oh, now I'll pull up Asius's and now I'll put, all right. No, now Burlington. Um, me. Oh, yeah. Um, it, it will not let me close Tim's character sheet. Nice. Oh, we'll keep it up uh, for inspiration. Do you think you should uh, refresh? We're hearing uh, double click um, on the character, maybe? No, now you're covering the chat. There you go. It does. It's weird. It's it. Foundry does not like you. Uh, no, it does not. Uh, Foundry is being kind of a pain in the butt. But... Well, while you're figuring that out, do you want us to sing? Oh yeah. So oh, I'm gonna hide, hide, I'm gonna hide, put hide, the hide. I'm gonna put the uh... because I actually have songs. Oh, I was gonna say the. Burl uh, reminded me of um, whose lines it anyway. That's that's yeah, that's where it's wrong. <laughs> All right, so I will put no. The... That was it was the Irish drinking song. Yeah. Uh, yep. Okay. Yep. All right. So you said you have songs, Bob. I have written songs uh, for a side thing that I'm doing, and I have a song. <laughs> Are you going to sing it? If you would like me to. I would like you to. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. We Let need to hear it. it. All right. You ready? <clears throat> From the clanging of the armor, the battle call will ring. But until it comes, together we will sing. So fill up another cup till the taps run clear. Praise we to the knights who always have the beer, 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 <laughs> beer, beer. beer. Hey. I, like it. Yeah. I gotta make a donation to Aziz. <laughs> Cheers, Aziz. Cheers. I have a whole bunch of uh, written stuff. That was helpful. Uh, me and my wife wrote that. I like it. It was good. That's pretty well good. Done. All right. Well, Bob is singing uh, while he's tracking. Uh, bear, let me bear, bear. let me hear some uh, let me hear some bear. joyful reverie from everybody else. Bear, 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 bear. <laughs> Oh, we love again. The beer. <laughs> I, know. I don't know Hope too many drinking die. songs. No, me neither. Um, oh, uh, what's the one from um, uh, from Jaws? Da -dum. Da -dum. <laughs> oh, <laughs> farewell to you, fine-hearted laddies. F farewell to you, ladies of Spain. No, ever no, Doss, no. no. All right, all right. Never I have, Jaws. Sorry, I mostly have a bad, a bunch of drinking chants, other than that one song. <laughs> um, all right. Well, voting has begun. So let everybody know how you feel about uh, Bob's rendition of a joyful reverie uh, and that none of the knights joined in. Um, and um, <laughs> sorry, Nick. we weren't prepared. You already called it. I mean, I <laughs> know uh, the voting's live right now. People can vote. No, I meant like we didn't prepare for the day as is. So we didn't we didn't have our chorus in the back. Of it. All right. Who is somebody messaging me? Oh, OK. Um. Yeah, Aaron. In those cases, just tell me what's up. I, I'm gonna miss those all the time. Um, the party window is blocking chat. Thank you. Um. All right. So, uh, hopefully, everybody can see that now. 
Um, all right. Sorry about that, everybody. I don't know why uh, Gwildor decided to delete the character sheets. Um, uh, not character, just the, the nature of it. Well, and um, some of our um, hero tracker things are not in. Yeah, again, um, that's just like the one thing that we're still trying to figure out is how to work within the confines of Foundry plus OBS plus popping out stuff so we can have all this information for you guys. Okay, um, so votes are coming in. So, Azeus, you're doing that. Who wants to go next uh, for actions that you guys could try to take to reach the clan hold? I would like to do a nature check to kind of observe the the mountains and how they look to see, you know, if we're looking at the Hookball Mountain if there's one that actually looks like a hook to kind of base upon that name. <laughs> that sounds like a really good idea, Nick. I'm, just, um, I'm, I'm giving it a shot here. Folks. Um, that's, <laughs> no, uh, that's a really good idea. I'm going to lower the DC for that and say the DC is only 24. So 29. Wow. Hey, uh, so that's that is a really good idea. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that one, nice. that one was actually a good name, idea. So, <laughs> um, so as you uh, travel out into the, uh, into the wilderness, uh, Nick Escanor relies on the knowledge that he has of these mountains and his knowledge of nature. Um, and you begin putting together some geographical uh, landmarks and actually start recognizing some of the peaks that may lead you towards the Hook Mountain. You don't see the Hook Mountain yet, uh, but with the driving visibility, it is unlikely to be seen. But using your knowledge of nature and geography, you are able to start putting the party on the right track. All right. Earl uh, or uh, or uh, Gwildor. Yeah, can uh, Gwildor use his you know knowledge of the society and the lands around you know to make a society check to just you know be like he had his inherent knowledge of the region? Um, well, these are giants, and technically giants fall under the society check. So yeah, why don't you go ahead and make a check, uh, Tim, to see what you know about the Krieg clan ogres and their right. headquarters? DC is going to be twenty seven. All right, thirty three. All right. So, Tim, right. what what uh, what do you know uh, in this case? You were successful. Oh, well, I happen to know that, you know, there are special markings that go on tree on mountain rocks that the Krieg clan giant used to find the giant stronghold. So we can follow those as well. All right. Mm -hmm. That sounds pretty sweet. All right. So they're like tag, like yeah. gang tags. Yeah, they're like etched on, you know, small marks. I mean, some people side, would call like... them trailblazes, but, you know, if you want to call <laughs> them gang tags, you could do that. Yeah, yeah. Shepherd. Grew up in the city. <laughs> okay. Yeah, a bunch of giants out there with spray paint in the forest. All right. And lastly, Burl, on this first day as you approach the Hook Mountains, uh, what would you like to do? Remember, fellas, as we are looking for, you know, various members of the Creed clan giants as we walk around here, it's likely that they're looking for us as well. So I'd like to maybe take a, a stealth check to take some time and cover our tracks and, and keep us uh, hopefully a little hidden from obvious uh, searches. Um, OK, so that's actually a, a good idea. I'm going to add this. Um, so. To the. Uh, to, to what <laughs> we have Jim going on, made me laugh. <laughs> what's that anthony jubert made me laugh in chat <laughs> oh, okay um matt um i am going to add this to this um oh now matt go ahead and make your stealth check dc's 27 32 all right matt so what i'm going to actually do for this is i am going to increase this from six to eight so now you are being oh. hunted um instead of filling up after six ticks we'll fill up after eight ticks so wait my attempt to help us i rolled well and then i made it worse no, 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 you made it better you made it better yes everyone threw a, went from a one through six to a one through one of eight chance that, that's oh. their clock the bad guy clock and you made it harder for the bad guys to win yeah but what yes. i'm saying is my action invented a problem <laughs> because there <laughs> oh, wasn't a no you just weren't hunting. aware of the problem that problem yeah. that problem was always there yeah yeah I, we're going I, through the I wilderness wish I something's have chosen gonna come stealth. up <laughs> um, i wish i wouldn't have chosen stealth then because um, so that was there whether you were aware of it or not. So actually, not only did you make it better, uh, you actually also uh, uh, gained information that uh, you technically we're didn't have before. Yes. Um, I'm being penalized. Uh, case in point, I didn't create it that fast. It was already there just for me to drag onto the board. 
Um, okay, so after the first day, or after the first half day, um, the storms begin to rage, and the deluge of snow and wind come crashing down. For Burl and Gwildor, it's a pleasant day at the zoo. But um, for Asius and for Escanor, it is a bit cold. Gentlemen, I need for you to make DC 24 basic fortitude saves. Okay. <laughs> I, th- I thought that red dice was my dice for a second. It scared the crap out of me. <laughs> you can't catch a break, man. Someone no, rolls no. a one every time. All right. <laughs> uh, that's that's two ones today for yeah, me. All right. So, Asius, so strong is your dwarven fortitude that you take uh, no damage. Uh, however, uh, you are being hunted as apparently the one who is attacking you. However, um, <laughs> Escanor. Well, quick. Escanor, you take 32 points of cold damage, but since you critically failed, uh, it would actually be double that. It would be 64 points of cold damage. Jeez. Yikes. Guys, it's freaking cold. Now, in this case, you can see that uh, Escanor has basically lost all of his stamina. stamina. And so really what is being lost here, it's not really causing him to lose uh, you know, damage yet. It's just eaten through his his stamina, his wherewithal, his, his pluck has sort of been worn away Way by the brutal cold of the morning okay the afternoon begins and you are now well up into uh the foothills of the storeville mountains um what would you guys like to do next you guys don't have to go in the same order you can split it up um uh through burl's inadvertent actions uh you also know that maybe someone or something is trying to follow you um in addition uh You've made some good progress, but uh, there is, of course, uh, other issues and other things at stake. Okay. Yeah, I want to know what's going on with the poll, Mr. Melinda. Oh, I forgot about the poll. Are we? I want to know how my singing too? went. Here we go. All right. I am ending the poll, closing the poll. I actually didn't see the results, so this is news to me. Huzzah! Yeah! Thank you, Asius. 82% with a huzzah. So Stay tuned for future content. Sounds like a critical huzzah to me. <laughs> sounds like a critical huzzah to you. Uh, now, in this case, uh, because of this, um, on your next failed check, you can turn it into a success. Not a critical fail, not a, a success to a critical six, but you can turn a failure into a success. So despite the fact that he uh, led you around in a big uh, goose chase this morning. <laughs> we um, had a good time. You had a good That's time right. with it, and you guys are now sort of uh, feeling lifted. Your spirits are lifted. You got a little bit of booze in you, and Asius, is, uh, Asius, has, got the, Asius has got the medicine. Um, all right, so... In the yeah, afternoon yeah, yeah. of the second day, what would you guys like to do? Um, the wind and the rain, uh, the wind and the snow are growing more intense, and as elevation increases, so too does uh, the the risk and dangers of the environment. The cold becomes more bitter. The ground starts to become icy and slick. There are numerous challenges now as you move into ravines and valleys. No longer do you have the wide sweeping vistas that you had before, but now find yourself constantly down narrow chokeways and treacherous ravines. What would you guys like to do? I'm uh, going, bro. Oh, okay. Uh, I was, uh, you know, it is getting colder and the wind's getting uh, a bit sharper. So I think uh, I'd like to make a nature check to find to scout out some good places where we can uh, take refuge while, uh, uh, you know, breaks here and there to to not freeze to death. All right. Yeah. Nature check. Um, also, I mean, night is coming as well. Um, and so there is something to be said about eventually you're going to have to find a place to camp overnight during a magical blizzard in the winter in the mountains, uh, in the evil mountains with, you know, horrific uh, uh, things that are potentially looking for you and trying to uh, hunt while, you down and find while you. While magically nightmared. While magically nightmared. All right. Um, all right. What uh, you said nature? Yeah. All right. Great. Why don't you give me a nature check? The DC is going to be 27. Matt. Ooh, I got a 25. Oh, all right. That is a failure, Matt. However, uh, if you would like, uh, it's up to but you. But he gets, but he gets the plus one. Oh no, it's not a, the. Uh, it's not a plus the, one. The next, the next level. Correct. It, he gets the next level. It, if, which I assume we would do. Um, actually, I think it says on your next failure. It says next. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then, yeah. oh, yes. The, oh no, it says can right. upgrade their next failed check. Oh, okay. So this is your next failed check. Would you like to upgrade that to a success? 
think yep. that seems like a good idea. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Somehow, uh, the 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 joyful, boisterous songs of Asia Strong Forge keep your spirits light. <laughs> And uh, Burl, what what are you able to find? What are you able to uh, locate for the party that helps them? Uh, just a, a couple uh, nice big trees grouped together, and some evergreens that have uh, created a nice, nice uh, little uh, like a windbreak. Yeah. yeah. All right, that sounds keeps, good. Keeps the snow off our backs. Right. Shields us from the wind. Right. And again, things don't have to happen linearly. So maybe that's like what Burl did at the end of the day. He's been looking mm-hmm. all more all afternoon. He's looking for that nice little kind of uh, a windbreak or cove that he can. You guys can make a nice camp for. But that may actually only happen at the actual end of the day. Uh, okay. Everybody else, what do you guys got? I will. So we took like a little break when we did the the frost check or the cold check, right? Like we were kind of like sitting there. And while doing that, I was meditating and praying to Ayamade uh, to give us some guidance. So I'm going to do a religion check and hopefully my deity gives me a vision on uh, which direction we need to I go. I like that. Yeah, that's I do a, like that. I do like that as well. That's pretty cool. Yep. DC 26. All right. That is a hey, success. Nice. All right. Good job, Nick. Good job, Nick. All right, Nick, what uh, describe the vision that Ayamade gives you? I see off into the distance, the glowing glimpse of the mountain that we're looking for. So in the future, as I, as we get closer and closer to it, I know the general direction of it and the overall shape. So I know which mountain peak to look, go towards in the future. It's like the hound, the hound staring into the fire. (laughs) <laughs> yes, exactly. You get you get visions within the within the crisp of the flames. Um, Iomade speaks to you that this is your journey and this is your destiny. Do not fail me, Escanor, for your greatest hour of courage is at hand. All right, that brings up who? <clears throat> well, guys, I know I might have uh... really biffed it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was looking. Thank God, at... you brought the beer though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the beer was good, but the footprint thing, I get that, but. I, I'm telling you guys, I see a di- I see some some like broken branches, and it looks like something was going this way. Um, so I'm going to use survey wildlife for my survival check this time. Oh, okay. Yeah. So just it's just an a, an optional feat, but you can it, the DC is still up to you. But okay. I still get my bonus because this is still technically tracking. And what does survey wildlife do? It lets me on a success attempt a recall knowledge check with a minus two penalty to learn more about the creatures from the signs. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, go for it. Make a uh, make a track check. Now the DC is going to be higher because the snow has been falling and you're further along. So the DC is now yep. going to be 31. Yeah. So I didn't get the first time. But we're going to go for it this time. You do get big the roll, you do roll. get the auto upgrade. Uh, so that is a critical failure. <laughs> did you did you hack your dice today? <sighs> It's just not, it's just not, uh, tracking was never easy. It's just strong. Yeah. yeah stop tracking. You're drunk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I didn't sniff out the, the, if they weren't drinking, I couldn't sniff them out. All right. So not if only you drinking, <laughs> not only does Asius once again, lead you astray, uh, which bites up, uh, you know, uh, but at this point you get, you're being driven by, uh, the visions of Iomede and, uh, but it mostly really starts to erode your confidence in your companion, this, this dwarf barbarian who you turn to for these things. Um, but unbeknownst to the party, they are also, uh, uh, uh Asius was right about one thing. Uh, there were tracks of something that is. Yeah closing in even now. So I am going to tick up the you are being hunted. So and instead of leading it to the hook mountain, I'm leading him right to the monster. You got yeah, it. That's, right. that's exactly <laughs> right. Yeah, that's that's exactly yourself. right. <laughs> Guys, I know where it's going. Let's go. Um, meanwhile, um, you don't make as much progress on this first day as you would have liked because uh, you wasted some time following bad leads uh, and your morale is somewhat lessened. But nighttime comes and thanks to Burl's uh, nature check, um, you were able to avoid um, having to camp out on the barren Wilder and icy snow. Uh, oh, taken an action. That's right. Time. Okay, Nick or uh, uh, Tim. Sorry. So while we were, uh, you know, traveling, Gildor is quite the preparer. So he's been gathering up, you know, twigs and sticks that he think might help him build like some lean twos for us while we sleep in this horrible blizzard tonight. Just to keep some of the snow off of us. Okay. Um, we would like to use a crafting check at the end of the day to see what how good of structures I managed to create. Okay, great. Go for it. Let's go. Uh, DC is going to be okay. Great. So in this case, Tim, I don't think this is actually going to help you reach uh, the clan hold. 
Yeah. But what I am going to do is I am going to give you guys two extra uh, points on your warmth. Nice. Um, which will be needed for the people who would otherwise uh, freeze to death. Thank you. Excellent. You're okay. well appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Um, so nighttime comes and uh, with the crude fortification built in the small lean to uh, by Gwildor uh, in the small sort of cove or wind natural windbreak found by Burl, the group huddles in to a snowy and icy first night. Now, Again, Burl and uh, Gwildor have level five indoor elements and so do not have to make any sort of checks. Now, the cold and bitter is so bad, Nick and um, uh, Bob, that normally you guys would get no sleep and it would be very, very brutal for you. But if you'd like to, instead of making very difficult fortitude saves, um, I am just going, I can just, you can either make the check or you can sort of use some of these provisions that have been provided for warmth, and then you will also get a good night's sleep, uh, pending nightmares, of course. Yeah, I want that, the second option. Is it, can I use my <laughs> sleeping bag to help out at all? Uh, again, I'm assuming that you have at least <laughs> sleeping bags That's and blankets. Standard. Otherwise, you were just <laughs> okay. sleeping on a rock and snow, and that would be really, really I bad. I mean, I got my shield. I could put it right. down and so lay on that. Ordinarily, I would deduct four ticks of warmth here, but I'm only going to deduct two. Um, okay. because uh, two of your party members are completely protected. And of course, Lucky is fine. Um, and because uh, Tim was able to increase the uh, effectiveness of your shelter, you actually are basically net neutral. However, at the end of the first day, uh, Tim, did you have create food today? Yes. Okay. In that case, I will also not uh, subtract any provisions because Gwildor was able to magically provide you with sustaining food. Yeah, I'm going. So as as long as I can prepare it, I will be preparing it every day. Great. All right. Uh, so that means if you know combat ensues, all my third, second level spell will be create food. That's okay, fine. got so. it. Okay. <laughs> Throw food at it. Maybe it'll get distracted. Right. Night comes quickly on the hook, and soon, so do the visions. Except for Escanor, who is still immune for the <laughs> next couple of days. However. Burl, Gwildor, and Asius are haunted once again by the horrific visage of the three horrific crones, the hags of the hook. One which is black as midnight, tall and spindly, tears at your flesh. The other one with eyes like blue, burning blue embers, and with skin like transparent glass, with crackles of icicles around her, laughs maniacally into your ear. You'll never survive. The hook will claim you, and if it doesn't, oh, then we will, my dears. I hope you do make it. You'll look nice in our stew. <laughs> the, uh... Uh, horrific nightmares assault you all, and except with the exception of Escanor, everybody once again make a will save. Uh, DC twenty-eight. On Gwildor's got to sleep. <clears throat> Remember, if what, you guys have so a what's failure, a failure? You can upgrade it. Yeah, um, thinking about uh, upgrading mine to. So I have to use a hero point to upgrade this to a success. No, you can use. Oh, you didn't oh we each the, get one. Yes, right? Or is it just? Oh, I on thought the it next was. Failure? I thought it was just the next one. I, I think I have to use a hero point yeah. to upgrade this. Gwildor is going to use says, a hero point. It says the party can upgrade okay. their next failed check by gotcha. one degree okay. of success. Yeah, okay. so just that one. So I have to use All a hero right. point. I I don't want another failure. I can't be that fatigued. All right, Asia. So you're going to spend a hero point to fight off these horrific visions. Uh, so what does that what does that look like? What does that entail? Well, so you know the <laughs> the woman is in her your mind. You know, oh, you again. <laughs> Yeah, well, oh, my, pr my pretty one, you are very handsome. Asius <laughs> so, went to bed a little drunk, and he actually thinks this is a pretty, pretty hang <laughs> hitting on him in the, in the sleep. So he's not that tormented by this. He's kind of, he's kind of happy about this dream that he's having. He's right like, this now. is a, on a dwarven woman scale. This is like an eight out of ten. <laughs> I didn't realize that uh, uh, dream drunk goggles was a thing. You're not a dwarf. You wouldn't understand. <laughs> 
<laughs> all right. Well, Meanwhile, Gildor also used a hero point to succeed. Oh, okay. You failed uh, as well. All right. So what does that what does that mean for Gildor? His is far more like uh, Inception, where his brain is now noticed as a, <laughs> an aggravant uh, and is trying to expel it forcefully. So you know he's fighting back inside of his own head with okay. himself and summoned conjurations of his companions. There, I got you. So you're having subconscious uh, uh, combats and in Inception with your tactically yeah. armed subconscious. All right. That's well, right for initiative. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll just do a whole separate uh, combat here. All right, so everybody yep. um, uh, everybody then used their hero points. So you all passed. So you were able to awake um, on uh, the next morning. And because of the protections and because of the magical protections um, and because of your will saves, um, you actually get good night's sleep. So nice. um, everybody uh, restore all of your resolve. Um, oh, all of it? Sweet. Yep. Sleep and nice. You can reduce your doom condition by one. What? If you, if you have it. Uh, including me? Including you, Tim. You're actually wow. able to get a good night's sleep and start to recover some of your soul. Um, Amazing. <laughs> and uh, you guys will not uh, lose anything. But however. What about fatigue and drained? Um, fatigue goes away. Okay. And the drain goes away because you're not fatigued. Does it go, just, does it just go down one? Nope, it goes away completely. Oh, Asius is back in business, guys. <laughs> However, sleeping takes time, obviously. And I'm guessing the monsters did not sleep. And the, hunting us. that is very true, Tim. <laughs> ah, so they're fatigued. <laughs> ah, Ooh, that's, that's true. Force march. That, that's true. <laughs> um, rest but, for the wicked. Uh, but during the night, uh, uh, whatever is hunting you, continuing to close in all right so it is the next day day two and the snow and the wind howl down before you and you are now ed entering the very edge now of the of the forested sort of hilly foothills and you are now moving up more into the mountains proper all right who would like to go first and what would you like to do Quick question: Do we or do we do two rounds of actions before the day is over? Yes, is you get one action in the morning and then one action in the afternoon. All right, uh, I've got one. If no yep. one else says anything, yeah, yep. I, I got one after you. So you go okay. first. Um, so I don't know if this will fly, but let me know. Uh, you know, we're losing some tracks in, in morale, and I'd like to to help bolster that. Okay. Uh, you know, things aren't going so great. We're not there yet. It's cold. Everybody's hungry uh conditions aren't so great so i'd like to use uh deception to tell my uh to tell my party that things are going great <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that we're really doing a good job i'd like to increase the morale if i can yes you can uh well the party's level 10 so i'm going to pick a level 10 dc it is dc 27 all right oh, hi. <laughs> all right i love it all right uh, Burl, <laughs> 25. Yes. Um, Burl, you attempt to uh, assuage your companions. However, um, we'll say that Asius believes you. He's like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but Gwildor and Escanor can only look on and feel some dread slipping into their heart uh, as the morale continues to drop. You guys realize that you are walking into what essentially is an ambush. Your enemy obviously knows you're coming. They're magically assaulting your dreams. They're quite possibly using divination magics to scry on you as you uh, as you sit here. And you also have the unnerving sense that you are being hunted by something. And you cannot help but start to feel it gnawing into your heart. Look, I know that something's after us, but we got to keep moving on. Grab onto this rope, everyone. I'm going to pull you up through the snow. <laughs> My immense athletic skill. Okay. I was tired of walking anyway. Checks out. You could have rolled lucky. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. All I right. am going to roll an athletics check. All right. Well, now there's something here that we can do here, Bob, okay. if you're interested. Yes. Okay. If you want, Bob, uh, you can have this be a sort of a group action. Okay. Oh. And, and everybody can follow your lead. All right. And so everybody will get to make an athletics check, including you. Okay. All right. And you, as and of course, if you're following uh, Asius's lead, uh, you gain uh, follow the expert. Uh, you gain uh, the benefits of following the expert, and he's actually a master in athletics. Um, so you would not only gain your level, you would also gain an additional plus three. So if uh, if you're if you're not trained in athletics, you would get a plus thirteen bonus to your athletics check. Um, however, uh, Asius and the party will use whichever die roll is the highest. Which you know whichever. Oh. 
check is the highest. It probably will be easiest, but you could roll a three. And if Gwildor rolls a, you know, whatever, you lose that. But leading the party, dragging them on like that is very draining. And so for each party member who fails the check, you will become drained one. Fails the check. What's the DC? <laughs> uh, the DC is going to be 26. Well, hmm. Uh, but I don't get any benefit if a bunch of us succeed. No, you're just going to use it's oh. like it sort of represents the entire group. Or you okay. could just or you could just yeah. roll yourself. You just hang on, guys. I got this. (laughs) (laughs) I thought you said you had this. I just sit on the sled as it remains immobile. And I'm like. (laughs) 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 My gosh. (laughs) Asius, you are ineffective. Sorry, my plate armor is too heavy for you to pull me. I should have, have you should have allowed me to assist you. Well, the problem was Lucky was sitting on the sled as well, so yeah, he weighed <laughs> it down. Um, so uh, unfortunately, that uh, effort in order for Asius to help you guys all start to you know gain ev- uh, elevation and climb uh, does start to eat into some of your supplies of of rope and grapples and crampons and grappling hooks and stuff like that, and of course. It uh, wastes some precious time as well. Time that the enemy spends in good use. All right. Well, well before we get rid of that rope that he already tried to use, um, it, it's still at a pretty decent length for me to attempt to utilize uh, to wrap around a tree and to be able to climb up a tree and see if I can get a better view uh, of the terrain to see if we can see the uh, Hukma Mountain. All right. Yeah. So you're going to make an athletics check to climb a tree in the middle of a magically reinforced hurricane blizzard. So that sounds pretty smart. I have, uh, I have, I have a rope. There. All right. I have got a rope attached. Rope. So, yeah. Well, how, is, how is that going to help you get to the top? Have you not it just seen you don't tree fall. climbers? And, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> falling's not the concern here. Um, Nick, why don't you go ahead and make a DC 28 athletics check? All right, guys. Wish me luck. Good luck. That's pretty tough. Oh, 31. All yeah, right. Everyone passes but me. Everybody does pass. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I rolled two ones I, today I, I already. I don't want to hear it. True, true. All right. I deceive you. <laughs> um, d- driven by the vision of uh, Ioma Day, uh, Escanor bravely climbs up the tree. Escanor, what is that like? So it's literally like a hurricane, magical hurricane blizzard, and you're climbing up this sort of spindly conifer. What does that look like? The, the, the strength in, is coming from deep with, within uh, the vision strong with my deity and, and making sure that we find the right place to go to. So <coughs> I just boister up and, and head up the tree, holding onto that rope as tight as I can and just going little by little until I can see off into the distance. The mountain is within striking distance. We are more, about halfway there. <laughs> that, Do not lose hope. That is actually <laughs> true. And for the first time ever, Eskinor, uh, 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 high above, you are able to see the, uh, the, the just make out the- Oh, ba- geez, Ben. Um, oh, hey, <laughs> nice. Thank you, Ben, for the $40 tip. That is uh, very nice. That's very sweet, and that is very awesome. Um, uh, ben says, now would be a good time to shake things up. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, come on. Uh, ben is not wrong. <laughs> He's not wrong. He's not. Uh, enough for a spin on the wheel of destiny there. Um, okay. Well, um, let's uh, let's spin the wheel of destiny and um, let's see what happens. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, dun, dun, dun. The calm destiny. The knights must choose one of two ways. Option one. <laughs> I, I'm I thinking option, option two. two. Option two. <laughs> <laughs> what happens? I, I vote option two. Uh, the community the can yeah, vote the on the outcome ah. of the event. Ah. Yeah, All right. Us. So, <laughs> two. Um, so uh, here we go. So as you guys proceed <laughs> upwards, uh, there kind of seems to be uh, maybe a, a, a two options. There appears to be some sort of crude, primitive, very overworn mountain path, like almost like a trail, maybe very, very overworn. Uh, but um, it heads up right through to the highest peaks, almost like out on the edge. You'll be completely exposed. 
There seems to be another way to get to where Nick saw from his vantage point to get to around to the mountain. Is it through the mountains, the depths of the mountains? Because this sounds familiar. Uh, f- <laughs> through the Karadaras. Kar- um, the other way is not to go uh, through it, the mountain, but around it. Instead, um, there is another path which will take you down into more of like the base of the mountain, through the lowlands. But it could take you more time. However, you uh, hesitate for a moment and you decide to let the... <laughs> chat decide. decide to let the chat decide <laughs> all right we all we all break the fourth wall and say and <laughs> we, can, we can sense the wheel turning and we must obey its call <laughs> all right and survey says all right so regardless of what the survey says which path do you guys want to take because that is something that happens regardless of the wheel of destiny do you okay. guys want to take the high mountain pass which may be more direct Okay, or do you want to take the kind of roundabout way, which may be more uh, like a more difficult path, a longer path, but potentially could be less exposed? Asius wants to go direct. What do you guys think? Yeah, it's I'm well, you're warm. clumsy, Asius. So you really want to go off of, yeah. a, of a cliff on the side <laughs> of a mountain? And, and and I understand our time is of the essence. Don't get me wrong, but let's. You got a big ass mall. We don't know. Uh, Time is of the essence. Yeah, that is what no, I hear. Right. Yeah, no. I guess Nothing we, will stop we, me from getting to those giants. We, we have to, yeah. I'd have to go with Aegis. We got to go for it. All right. Sounds like the direct way it is. All right. The group decides to ascend into the Hook Mountain. And you guys travel up. Oh, snap. <laughs> Oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> uh, into <laughs> into high uh, high altitude. Oh, oh, we got reset. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Yeah, they just got it. it like, we went back to zero. zero. Yeah, it just it just. Guys, takes, we went the wrong way. It just takes a minute to update. Yes, yeah, so it, it all resets. <laughs> no, we're not following Asius right now. It's fine. I don't know. He, we did speak <laughs> we're going up, the correct so. direction. All right. As you take this route, it does not take any extra time. However, tr- climbing into these rough areas, you are exposed to brutal and savage cold. And for the first time ever, uh, Burl and Gwildor feel the bite of cold. Not horrible but the bite of cold you guys start using more and more rope and you start using more and more pitons as the climb up the uh the the mountain really becomes more about climbing than anything else and you lose another point of provision however i also need for the two people who are not magically protected with a level five endure elements so uh that would be azius and that would be escanor i need you guys to make dc 30 fortitude saves here we go guys that one i'm sure Hey. All right, you um, are. Hey. Hey. Right. Well, here's the best part. You guys succeed, so you would take half damage from this, which would have been 40, 12 plus 30. But the, you guys both have Juggernaut, so when you pass a save, a Fortitude save, you get That's a critical right, success. Crit pass. So you <laughs> actually take no damage. Nice. Um, yeah. As despite being in what is essentially like Arctic conditions during a horrific windstorm, uh, uh, the magical I hold my shield up to to block me from the from the from the wind. Asius is just right behind me. Yeah, I'm short. <laughs> and um, let's see what the chat decided. <laughs> I like Storm Phoenix is uh, uh, what the ch- what the pull should have been. <laughs> <laughs> or something good doesn't all right. happen. Oh, <laughs> wow. Close. Close. All right. The chat decides that something good happens to the party as they begin uh proceeding upwards and into the uh into the depths or into the uh into the heights of the uh of the hook mountain. <clears throat> all right. So uh in this situation, normally not a whole lot would good happen to you guys. However, um as you sort of climb up into these um, high mountainous areas, you suddenly see some movement in the snow. And um, before you can even really react, you see a small um, diminutive crystalline figure, almost white, but transparent, no bigger than a halfling, probably smaller than a halfling, sort of emerge from behind a rock. Hello? 
Who goes there? I? Who are, what are you? Who are I, you? I am Pickwick. I am, I am an ice fairy. This mountain is my home. Oh, but is you are not. Is there Frolic around? Uh, no. Uh, I do not have a brother, but everything is my brother. The trees are my brother. The mountain and the skies and the snow are my brother. Tell me, you are not ogre. You are not giant. What brings you to my mountain? We're hunting them. Hunting them? Yes. The ogres and the giants. Hunt. This is where you kill things, yes? Yes. If we in order to, to yes. prevent a war. A war? Which war? A war amongst the giants and the rest of civilization. Hmm. Are you telling me that you are here to provoke these horrific creatures? I have no love for the giants. No. But stay, stay, they do. And I do not wish to see them destroy and despoil more than their fires and their forges already have. Well, we're trying to stop them because they're attempting to aid the rise of the rune lords and the destruction of the world. What is a rune lord? Ah, I see. Look, no they're just going to keep forging more <laughs> fire burning the mountain and eventually they will come down this mountain yes they will take your brothers you mentioned your brothers are the trees and the animals they will take them all and use them to for their forge and for their weapons and for their food mm. i see it is sad the earth itself cries out in pain i hear it and feel it in my bones the giants have dug very deep very deep in search of steel and stranger things yet to make their magical weapons but i did not know that war was coming hmm very well i will then bestow upon you my grace and my blessing upon you each i bestow upon you my protection, the protection of Pickwick. Um, Tim, you can restore your two fifth level spell slots and everybody gets the benefit of a level five endure elements spell for the next three days oh. against cold. So Ooh, awesome. uh, wow. you Thank guys, you, Pickwick. that's going to help. Greatly uh, appreciate your help. That is awesome. I normally quite enjoy the sight of living things freezing to death. It is an interesting process to see something change so. But cool. uh, if you are here to make a difference, if you are here to stop the despoilers, then I will trust you. Also, I feel a strange force upon me, as if ordinarily I would have asked for a check for this. But there's some strange force calling from above that seems to be pressuring me to help you and mm, i will notice the same thing. and i will obey because that is what i am bid do so <laughs> Check well out. good luck then adventurers or heroes as you may call yourself come tell me should the songs ever need be sung who should i tell them that i met this day the knights of last call the knights of last call that's your name yes yes that group is the Knights of Last Call. That's a stupid name. You know what? <laughs> yeah. I don't mean any lip. Thanks for your blessing, but F off. Uh, <laughs> what Let's is, not provoke him now, Gwildor. Let's what not is, provoke him. What is F off? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me Have show a good day, you. We'll see you later. It's like... <laughs> well, good luck, boys. Have fun storming the castle. And then he, uh, <laughs> and then he like, uh, pieces the heck out. All right. So uh, basically, I yell Humbert Inc. on my way. Okay. Yes. So basically, uh, warmth is no longer an issue or a concern for you guys. Uh, awesome. Pickwick has sort of uh, taken care of that. All right. Awesome. However, uh, time is running out and the clan hold must be reached. So, what would you guys like to do? Uh, By the way, a, you guys are now in the upper mountains. Uh, the okay. the DCs have gotten harder. Okay. Did we, did well, we all take one action so far. I have not taken an action. Not okay, so anything. Well, no, no, no. We have since our last sleep. Uh, us three have, but Tim has it. Correct. So Tim's, Tim's going to make one action, and then we have four mm, more actions. That is correct, Matt. Okay. Correct. You're right. So, Wildor, now that he's getting in the groove of the magic of these hags, he's had a couple of days, a few nightmares coming at him. So now, during the day, he's going to start using just you know his master of the arcane knowledge to just 
make this blizzard less shitty, like start counteracting their magic as he travels. Right. You're going to like Gandalf it, you know, like when yeah. he's on Karadaroth. All right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, Gwildor, you begin your counter spells, but the power and the magic of the hags in a full covey, a trio of joined and linked hags is extremely difficult. Gwildor, it's DC 32. All right. Ooh. Well, Gwildor pulling the rust off after his doom. He's starting to get his vitality back. He's feeling good. Uh, so let's see what he's got going on. That's going to be a 33. All right. Ooh. Gwildor. <laughs> Through magical intonations, Gwildor. What, you know do, what? You, what do you, you know? What do you know? Gwildor's pissed. Oh, okay. he's going to use a hero point and make oh. us crit success. All right. Uh, Gwildor. Very so. nice. All right. Gwildor. I am going to mark a point on the clan hold reaching, but I'm also going to restore a point of morale right, due to your awesome. critical success because um, Gwildor, not only are you able to abate the storm, which enables you guys to get a lot more progress, but the, the, the lessening of the seeing Gwildor take command of the, oh, of yeah, the weather. His, his, he is a cold elemental dwarf. All right. The only reason he has been irritated at all thus far is because his soul was recently drained by the dam. <laughs> like his skin now begins to pulse and thrum with, you know, just blue energy and, you know, white energy as the snow around the party just seems to fade away and go elsewhere as if it's not worth the, you know, the snow doesn't want to bother the true cold. All right, it is very effective, and the storm uh, storm lessens. Um, in fact, wow. actually, uh, let me let me, uh, let me change this up here. I'll like, uh, put the intensity down a bit. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah this, uh, slow it down. All right, <laughs> the uh, the snow seems to uh, to thin out a little bit. Uh, all right, what would you guys like to do uh, next? Uh, or, that was actually the end of the first day, wasn't it? Uh, or the, the first half, through this, the first yeah, half day. The second day. All right. Well, uh, nobody needs to make a check against the brutal and unforgiving cold. So as uh, the the second half day progresses, uh, I am going to uh, just tick some clocks. It happens at the half day. Uh, it can. Yeah. Yeah. I get to tick at the end of the day and uh, during the middle of the day. Every round of actions we get, there's a tick. Right. A ticketing. Deep duck, deep duck. Yes. All right. Looks afraid of an old nip clock. <laughs> I just watched that the other day. It's so good. It is. What is this? Uh, oh. Hook, the film. Hook. Oh, yes. Tick tock, tick tock. Hook's afraid of an old nip clock. Bang All right. <laughs> All right. Well, I apparently have gotten booted from Foundry. So let me I did as on. well. It, it did it for me and then it went away. All right, so I will log back in. Um, all right, so of course, um, I have a question, Mr. Derek. Yeah, you, what's up? Um, by, by the way, for those of you watching, uh, the goal is to eventually uh, get back into the studio um, and still be live. So uh, eventually, uh, not only will we be able to do this live again uh, in, in the studio, but we'll also be doing it in person. Uh, and hopefully, these technical issues will no longer be a, a problem. Yeah, Bob, what was your question? Um, so we have we'll have be having one more action left. <clears throat> would drinking some Bravos brew before bedtime yeah. be an action? What is, well, I mean, no, that literally takes five seconds. What is Bravos okay, brew? It just helps me with the will save for the next hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I want to get like drunk on Bravos brew before bed. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a bad idea. But I didn't know if I had to use a full action to do that or if that's just a, a sip before bedtime. <laughs> uh, nightcap, so to speak. I got gotcha. like you. Yeah, you're in, Derek. I'm in, Smith's in. I don't see everyone else that well. It says I'm in, but uh, I, say, I don't see anything. I'm did you re in. did you refresh? No, I didn't think I needed yeah. to. I can I, if need be, but I think oh, you're going to need to. Go yeah, I think you need to. Even All right, like, refreshing. My screen, my screen shows that I'm still in there, but I don't think it was correct. Real. Oh, foundry. Yes, oh foundry. All right, we'll get we'll get everybody booted back up in there. Please hold. Please hold. It's very important to us. Well, you know, sometimes the Forge server, uh, you know, is 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 problematic. That's the uh, the risk of doing it live, right? It Not is. everything can go perfect. It is the reboot risk. It live. It is the it's, risk of doing it live. It is nine twenty four. Do we want to take a break while we reboot, or I do we, we want to finish break? the skill challenge? Yeah. Uh, that is correct, Tim. 
All right, I should be back in. I think everyone's in. Okay. All right, and ready, take two. All right, so uh, what would you guys like to do next? I'm going to go last, whatever we decide to do. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Are you sure you don't want to go first so we can recover the wrong way that you take? <laughs> All right. I'm running out of options here. <laughs> All right. Who wants to go next? Um, so we're climbing a lot, right? Uh, yeah. Like this is in the, so you're I'm in the mountains to, now. All right. So I'm going to attempt to help out um, with our climbing. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to use my athletic skill to help assist everybody with their climbing in this uh, rough terrain. All right. That is very difficult. Make a DC 30 athletics check. Uh, Eric, can you hey, that? All right. Crit yeah. success. Nice. Uh, say that again, Aaron. Can you clear the party window over to chat, please? Oh, sure. Thank you. All right. That is a critical success from Escanor. Uh, and you are able to find an incredible purchase and get the party moving and going with great skill and ease. Um, you guys increase your uh, your lead on the reaching the clan hold as you're able to circumvent the uh, the uh, the rocky climbs with little to no problem. And uh, actually, Nick. Uh, you're able to find some shortcuts that you otherwise would have had to spend a lot of time going around, and I'm going to give you back a unit of time. Yeah. Nice. Follow me, guys. Bro, hop on my back. Let's go. All right. <laughs> we got three more people, three more actions. What do we got? Uh, I can go, Tim. Yeah, go for time. it. All right. Um, so it is, you know, we, we uh, although we do have Endure the Elements, it is still pretty cold, and there's a lot of snow and that ice, and that makes it difficult to... Uh, try to walk, especially if we're going uphill, trying to climb a, a mountain here. Um, <clears throat> so uh, Burl's just going to lackadaisically cast a bunch of fireballs on the surrounding area so that we can uh, make it easier to, to get up. Using your spell slots? Yep. <laughs> you sure you want to do that? We're going to attack um, a bunch of giants, it, man. Can Mostly... it actually clear snow because snow can't be targeted it, it, by uh, fire? We're... No, I just have to choose a point. You... You might so, call no, it a no. rock slide, man. We're, we're talking about whether Fireball can actually burn things in Pathfinder 2. Legally, and wrote, rules is written, it cannot. But that's pretty awesome. So I'm going to let Matt do that. Um, and, and Burl is making the gamble that we uh, will sleep, and I'll sleep restfully before we run into uh, any giant. Okay. Matt, uh, why enough. don't you go ahead and make a spell attack roll um, <laughs> representing how much energy and power you can channel into your fireball spells. Oh, uh, right. Are, are you trying to like blow a path through the mountain? Yeah, he's like just, basically yeah. just create a cave. Hey, guys, he's I like, a shortcut. He, I love it. He's like Rydia. I know, I made uh, a shortcut. He's like Rydia from Final Fantasy fourteen. All right, uh, Matt, that is very effective and successful. And- uh, All right. You guys make some more progress. All right. Heat wave. This is my island in this. Uh, that leaves Asius and who? Gwildor. Gwildor. Mm -hmm. uh, so Gwildor, now that he you know is gaining some control over this weather, yep, uh, is going to you know he's, he kind of senses that the you know the hunt the things hunting him are getting a little closer. So he's going to try and you know direct the more of the force of the. And just you know, just you know, use their force against him and throw it towards the uh, the people hunting him. All right, Tim, that sounds really hard. Yeah, that's fair. I uh, doing some wild shit. DC <laughs> DC thirty two. All right, Ooh. just keeps going up and up. Well, you're getting higher and higher. Uh, that's only a uh, regular failure. That is a regular failure. Yes. All right, Tim, you start trying to harness the magical energy, but instead you actually begin drawing attention to yourself. Mm -hmm. And for the first time, you guys see something as you're moving through a snowy pass. You see a ripple in the snow, like a furrow underneath the ground. And you see like snow and ice sort of like peeling away as if something was moving uh, through the snow. Uh-oh. ruh -ro raggy. That's what you should have threw the fireball at. <laughs> well, you got you got you got some bombs, don't you, Asius? Yeah, I got some bombs. Can't but... you like throw some bombs to you know create a uh, distraction? Or Jason B wants to, Jason B wants to know that that fireball was illegal and uh, we should be removed. <laughs> All right, um... that's so stupid. That that is so stupid. If a fireball, if I'm walking around and I see a bunch of guys and someone shoots a big fireball and people are on fire, they're burning up. 
and then Snow is just like, nope, I'm uh, fine. I was like, this is stupid. <laughs> this is stupid. Whoever wrote these rules is dumb, and they need to change the rules because it, that's almost as bad as Greece not being able to catch fire. Uh, well, they, 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 they started. All right, Asius, that, that. that leads to you. Okay. Well, um, I was thinking about uh, maybe fortifying our area here because I yes. think the, uh, something's coming. Yep. So I would like to make a crafting check. Okay. And try to fort fortify some of these trees, maybe create some kind of, uh, um, I don't know, fortification. Oh, I'm okay. Straps or like, you know, the, the, what do you call those sticks? That, with the, you sharpen the wood and you stick them in the ground. I think they call them sticks. Yep. Oh, I thought there was a cool name for them. Barricades? Some sure. kind of barricade of sticks. All right. A redoubt or something like that. All right, Asius. Uh, that seems pretty reasonable. Okay, there we go. <laughs> he, he, he. Well, this he impales himself. Uh, he does not. Instead, as Asius begins, begins fussing and worrying over um, where or how this this threat that has been looming in um, as he begins to make preparations, uh, by the way, wasting some time as you do that, Asius, um, you guys are making your way, as you said, kind of straight up that sort of uh, frozen pass. And um, you're making your way through the narrow ravine and redoubt of this sort of haunting frozen wasteland when there is a swift move and sudden explosion of snow and ice off to your uh, side as a massive creature emerges from the uh, through from the ice a huge frost worm erupts from the ground it's uh, mandibles clicking in the air and it's high-pitched keening trill shattering all over the place and as the creature erupts forward spin the wheel of pain <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man, here it goes. Don't, Don't maze me, bro. Me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> As the creature erupts from the ground, the ground beneath it shatters, and you realize that the ground that you're standing on is actually like a frozen dome of ice and crevasses. And a crevasse randomly opens up underneath one of the knights, and they are pulled down below into a a crev an ice maze and crevasse. All right. Um, we are going to get a poll for who's going to start off the fight mazed. It's going to be a ice maze, but it's mazed. Uh, and then when we get back from our brief break, we are going to fight this really difficult frost worm. Um, and then I'm going to spin the wheel of pain again. So, Oh my God. Um, so just to be clear, we spun the wheel Check of pain. Out. Someone's going to have to possibly, it's going to be mazed. Uh, uh, well, they're going to be mazed and then they have to make a check each turn to try to escape. They're fighting a really tough creature. And then we're also going to spend the wheel of pain. All right, so let me get that. Uh, let me let me get that uh, pull up. You guys, uh, let the audience know how you feel while I get that going. I, I, I <laughs> you know, uh, I'm ready to fight this worm. Uh, <laughs> judging I, by I my survival and tracking, I'll never escape this maze. That's very possible. <laughs> that is very true. Uh, yeah, I'm now regretting uh, casting all of my fourth level. <laughs> <fireball. laughs> oh. Third level, right? Third level. Yeah, Third I meant they were all uh, burning today. <laughs> they were all burning hands, is what I meant. Um, so that is going that is going to be problematic at best. Um, and I am going to set this uh, for nine. Uh, what's nine? What's nine in military time? Seventeen hundred. That is not even close That's to right. Twenty one hundred. You add two. My God. Add twelve. All right, we're going to set it for 2145. Uh, yeah, I like subtracted two. <laughs> that's, that is, you that is what happened. All right. That is what happened. Uh, all right, I'm putting the poll in. Don't maze me, maze bro. Me, bro. <laughs> that's awesome and yet terrifying at the same time. Not me. All right, we've got four. Unless this fight looks dangerous, we've got four options. We've got Asius, <laughs> we've got Escanor, oh, we've got Gwildor, and we've got Burl. Someone's gonna start. Someone's gonna start the fight off in the ice. 
Uh, we'll find out who it is when uh, we get back. So uh, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to be back in about 10 minutes. So everybody uh, hold on to your butts because the Knights are coming right back. <laughs>
Okay, we are back. Hey, everybody. And look, see, we took that time, a little technical difficulty, and we fixed uh, we fixed some of the uh, we fixed some of the technical issues, which Ben, I apologize for. Uh, you know, uh, it is what it is. It, you know, we're uh, we're dealing with uh, we're dealing with out of date technology here. Actually, we're not. But you know, Foundry and OBS and all the stuff. We're trying to make it work and trying to make it cool and trying to make it fun. But we do have some hero points to award. So Escanor got one. Uh, looks like AZ. Oh, thank you. Uh, looks like Azius is going to get one. Gwildor is going to get one. And yes, even your evil dungeon master is going to get one. So uh, everybody getting everybody getting points. All right. So <clears throat> the moment we were all waiting for, which, of course, is who uh, is going to uh, who's going to end up getting uh, mazed. And that is uh, that is the question of the day. Uh, ben, we have not been voting uh, the nights. It's viewers yeah, only. We yeah, we yeah. refuse to vote. Ah, on our oh, oh. <laughs> oh, we tied. You wow. both got in? Whoa. They don't want us to have a tank for this fight? <laughs> Apparently not. Uh, hey, I'm I guess shout it's going to for... be a, a spellcaster only fight. Good luck, guys. Uh, um, shout it's... out for Bro only getting 11 All percent. right, so here's what I'm going to do. So I'm gonna here's the more like maze. Here's I, I do like the double maze. That's <laughs> here, 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 oh, let's, let's, listen, listen. If I were to double maze both the tanks in a fight against a gigantic worm creature, that obviously would not be very fair. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to subtract one of my GM points. Okay, so we go down from three to two and then say that both fall get in the maze. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, thanks, chat. I don't even know how that's mathematically right. possible, but okay. Tim, um, here's what we do. Let's just jump down in the pit as well. <laughs> <laughs> Follow us, guys. Yeah, right. Come on. What's um, the worst that can happen? Uh, did we get... Uh, okay, that that is... And I, I got my hero point. I got okay. mine. I, got, I added mine as well. All right, everybody got theirs? Okay, great. Yep, yep mine's in there. Um, And then I think... Did I get one as well? You did. Oh, okay. I did not. Right, okay. All right, so back up so here's what i'm gonna do um i am going to uh say that uh escanor and Azius, uh you guys are in the lead <laughs> and actually like the frost worm it had like dug a trap right like it had burrowed out the snow like right underneath it so that as you guys walk through the ice just crack like escanor was kind of like bad but then the addition of Azius was just too much weight <laughs> and like Ooh. the whole thing just like cracks through uh, What's the XP budget for a maze trap? And uh, uh, and <laughs> it, oh, real high. And uh, <laughs> and at, at least thirty-two experience points. Yeah. Uh, and oh, uh, right. and you guys fall through the ice suddenly as the frost worm turns towards Gwildor and Burl. All Burl, right. they got maze, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Let's retreat. Oh, <laughs> we gotta guys, run. Are you guys okay up there? Um, now, for all intents and purposes, you guys are basically removed from the game. Um, you guys will get to make saves at the end of your turn, and then I will uh, will add you guys back to the initiative. But for right now, uh, the say, do we roll initiative first? No, so you're it's for all to try to get out. No, you're 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 at the end of the round. You get to make okay. a check, and then if if you succeed, I will put you back on the map, and I will also let you roll initiative. But for right now, gotcha. um, you know, you you guys are right now. You are where you are. All we're right, wandering so, in the maze. All right. So with that being the case. Uh, I am going to need uh I'm gonna need some initiative from you have to roll your other wheel of pain first. Oh God. thanks, Bob. Oh dude, Bob, oh, he already dude. he already put both of us down. No, no one he promised you, the chat, chat. not me. Uh, I'm yeah, sorry. He took his other point to do that. <laughs> the wheel of pain. Oh, it's painful. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is the one we had last time. Yeah, All right, we explode. We explode. All right, we have another delayed blast question ball. Well, the question is the computer votes for which night should probably explode. The top two nights in the poll begin drawing in alarming amounts of energy. So there is a, there is something to be said about this. They could contain that blast by voting for one of you two that is in the ice. Mm. Um, well, we so we could either blow ourselves up and be contained there, or right. we could get out. <laughs> All right, so the vote is going to be for who gets blasted. Uh, <laughs> is it is it Azius? Now remember, uh, whoever is the top 
two are going to end up with these uh, blasts of energy, which uh, do a bunch of damage to them, and then also potentially explain explode. Um, as apparently this uh, the energy of this magical ice storm descends down and begins coalescing painful, powerful, cold energy and magic around all of you. All right, so uh, that poll is going on. So let's get started with Asius and Burl. So uh, I'm sorry, uh, Gwildor and Gwildor. Burl. All right, so I'm going to turn on your guys' combat state. All right, so you guys make sure uh, you guys go ahead and roll your. Remember to make sure you roll your initiative, not your perception. There's a perception for initiative. There's an initiative roll on your character sheet, and there's also a, a whatever um, a perception oh, check. All right, um, ah, big Burl with a. <laughs> Way to go, Burl! Nice. I crit, so Take I, go, him out. I, I go twice. Uh, right? I do yes. not believe that is how that goes. No, uh, that is not. That is not true. You double your actions for one turn, right? Yes, that, that's what it actually is. Um, <laughs> all those fireball uh, spell slots back. Right. At least, at least I still have third level uh, fireball. Fireball. Uh, fourth. You use only your third. Um, <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna. Do I'm I gonna... have a higher level fireball memorized than Burl right now? <laughs> Um, I am going to be ending the poll here in a few minutes, but Burl, uh, you could take your turn. Uh, it would be helpful to know uh, what, of course, is going to happen. So I am going to end the poll. And uh, it looks like the people who are going to get blasted are Burl and Asius. Um, oh, no. oh, wow. So wow. Burl. Right. One what kind of, what kind of damage is it? Um, so at the end of your turn, you're going to take 8d6 points of damage, and you get to make a save, and then we'll place a token on your space that you were on your turn, and at the end of the following turn, there is a 20-foot blast that deals 12d6 points of damage. Correct, but so. what type of damage? You know what? Uh, you know what? Cold? You know what? <laughs> a, cold, a cold blast? What? You know what? Of course it's cold. It's a frigid blast from the... Um, from the the snow frost control, Lord. the frost lords of the hags of oh of yeah, the no, hook. you know what it is. While I'm concentrated on fighting, I can't fight the blizzard from the hags. So that's, that's right. This is them just like the, being like you dick. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's a, it's going to be a DC twenty seven reflex save. All right, so Burl, you get to go. Um, you get to go first, buddy. It's a good uh, thing you put that resilient rune on, Burl. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Um, all right. Well, uh, you know, Burl is not not afraid. I've seen worse than this this stinky worm. Is it a graboid from Tremors? <laughs> is it a graboid <laughs> from Treasure? Uh, no, not quite. Oh, all right. Well, unfortunately, my fifth level. Oh, oh it just my oh, character just, just disappeared from me. Yeah, I know. Me too. Oh, we. Oh, I can see both. It's now Gwildor's on the uh, main screen again. And the Frostworm mm. is a two-piece clock. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> now now we know, now I know what uh, what causes that. Okay. It's the clock that's messing it up. It's yeah. What does cause it? It, 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 it is the clock that is messing that up. Yeah, okay. Interesting. I had a feeling last time, but I was like, not sure now. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. Makes sense. yeah. Every cut clock tick is doing something. Yeah, that's weird. Um, must just be a... Uh, must just be a strange um, uh, thing for for that. Okay, well we'll fix it in a second. Well, well Gwildor's, uh character sheet's blocking the battle map. I again. know. I got to get it out of here. Okay. All right. You have to refresh again. Is it the? Uh, yeah, it's it's something with the clock. <laughs> I don't know. It's something about that uh, clock. All right. Also, if Elon is going to explode, do we need to add yeah. the initiative counter? Uh, well, he'll just explode. Okay. Um, at the end of the turn, so he'll just he'll just take a bunch of damage, and we'll. we'll, well get do you want him. me to do any of my stuff now while you're reloading? Or are you good? Uh, I'm good. I'm going to worry about the okay. hero points later. So okay, okay. You can you can just keep the chat informed about how many hero points you are. I, I'd rather just all right get this thing rolling. All right, I had to re-roll his initiative. So all right, uh, Burl, go first. All right. Well, I am going to cast a third level fireball. Okay. Uh, you don't need to drag out the area of effect or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, it'll we, be yeah, just him. We know where he is. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boom. Anyway, so you start blasting. Um, I got a thirty-five, a success by six. All right. Well, I'm, I I can use a hero point to reduce that. Is that yes, right? you can. You All can right, make well, it into I a would, failure, and then I you get to roll your full that. damage. 
And right, I'll spend a hero point and then I will roll my damage right here. Now, luckily, this creature has 15 weakness to fire. So that 23 Ooh. damage is going to get modified by plus 15. And he is going to actually going to take 38 damage and the frost worm blows up. Uh, Burl, nice. you have one action left and uh, Lucky also has one action as well. All right. Uh, I can't. Um, am I still in the, the game? Did it do that weird thing again? Uh, it's uh, paused. The game is oh. paused. Oh, the game yeah. is paused. All right, there we go. The game right. is unpaused. All right. Uh, Burl is going to start to run away. Yep. And with my, uh, not command action, but my one action for Lucky. Oh, um, brave he's gonna, badger. He's going to yeah, go. Right. <laughs> well, he, 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 re he realizes I just got to get in the way so he can't charge Burl, hopefully. Gotcha. Or not as not as easily, at least. Gotcha. All right. Well, All right, uh, that's it. Yep. Well, the frost worm is going to start its turn and is going to rear back with its massive, huge chitinous head. And as it brings it down low, it shoots out a massive fifty foot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I do cone get cover cold? from I get oh, yeah. cover from, from uh, a massive from Lucky, yeah. fifty foot basically cone of cold that is going to hit all of you guys as a massive uh, cone of uh, ice and fire uh, or sorry ice and fire ice <laughs> it's a song <laughs> of ice and fire uh, shoots <laughs> outward cold. and uh, you guys are going to have to make a oh I, I don't know why that happened here we go. I clicked the wrong button. 13 D6 cold damage as 51 cold damage rips across the plane. All right. Gwildor, let me see. Uh, reflex save DC 32, sir. Oh. Do they get, oh. <laughs> do, do they get any bonuses for the uh, protection that they got from the fairy? They do cold? not. That only affects no. environmental cold. Gotcha. All right. Gwildor, that's a fail. Lucky, that's a critical failure. Lucky. Uh, yeah. So a couple questions. Yeah. yeah. Does, well, I guess just one. Does, do I does Burl get um, uh, cover from being behind Lucky? Uh, this is a big enough cone, and it's sort of sweeping out and swarming around everything. I'm going to say no. <laughs> the only way to get cover was if you got mazed. Checks out. Uh, you didn't even, that's total cover. You're just. I use there. I use one of uh, Lucky's hero points, which he has two, so now he has one uh, to 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 put it to a success. Okay. Uh, to a failure. Oh, no. a critical failure. To yeah, a failure. to a failure. Yeah, so he's going to take 51 damage instead of 102. All right, and then Burl, your reflex save, DC 32. All right, come on. Don't hit this one. 32, that is not a critical failure. So you are also going to take the 51 points of damage. 51? Uh, yes. Yeah, unless, like unless you use a hero point. Well, and then you'll take you'll still take twenty five or twenty six or something. I'll take it this time. I'll yep. Take it this time. Uh, so if you scroll up to where I rolled the fifty one damage from the frost worm, Matt, you should be able to. Uh, and to I can do this by clicking Burl and then saying take. Uh, yeah, if you go damage, to damage, and then I can. Oh, you already did lucky. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right, then um, the worm is going to roll a d four. Uh oh. To see how long Am it is I? before you can do that again. Yeah, he's basically a dragon type. Four. Oh, oh nice. that sucks. All right. Four turns. All right. He rolls up onto Gwildor. Uh, Where else should be exploding, <laughs> by the way? Oh, yes. That's a good point. Matt, at the end of your turn, uh, ice and freezing cold erupts from you, and boom, you take 28 uh, more points of cold damage, Burl. As uh, from the exp from the delayed blast cold, it was really a delayed blast cold. Um, so Matt, go ahead and make a reflex save against this. Oh, I just took it without even taking the save. Let me, oh. <laughs> uh... No, you're supposed to still take it, right? Because the reflex is to get away from. The nope, it's a basic save. Book. It's a basic oh, okay. save. Yeah. Well, the good news is you failed anyway, so you're correct in taking the right amount of damage. And of course, where Burl is, there is a glowing um, sort of. Uh, uh, shard of of energy that uh, will threatens to uh, threatens to explode at any moment. Um, what? Oh, what run, Forrest, run! So, oh, just be, for why? Uh, because because that's what this uh, that's what this does is it oh, wheel okay. of pain does that's what this delayed blast is basically like the energy follows you and then it explodes kind of in from your square so next round that is going to where you're standing right now is going to explode like a 20-foot fireball 
Okay. All uh, right. Chad is Chad is saying Burl didn't take original damage. I took the two damage thing so far, right? You should have been. Yeah, you got hit for fifty one, and from, then from the big spell, from the and cone, then, from the breath weapon, from the frost worm, and yep. then uh, you got uh, uh, hit again for the eighty six. I think they're from, talking about the same thing that Smith just talked about. Oh it, yeah, but you, we, you got it now. Now we have it. Yeah, you have it now. All right, Gwil Daddy. All right. Uh, first thing, uh, you know, he's not intimidated per se, but uh, he starts <laughs> racking his brain to try and figure out what he knows about this creature. Uh, it looks like a I'm hoping a magical beast. So I'm going to make a recall knowledge. Uh, it is a nature check. All right. Well, at least I am not trained at all in that. <laughs> So I, I, yeah, I could make that check. Oh, yeah, what is this? Oh, <laughs> uh, Tim, it, it, yeah, these are pacifist creatures that are known <laughs> that if you take two actions to pet it, will 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 uh, will bow down to you and serve you as a loyal companion and pet. Ah, uh, <laughs> that seems legit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at a dimension door over here, so if he has attack of opportunity, he may make it. Uh, he does not. Oh, Ooh. nice. Wow. Sorry to mention Gwildor up there. <laughs> All right, so Gwildor Dimension... Wow, he went far away. <laughs> <laughs> 120 <laughs> foot range. <laughs> All right, so Gwildor nopes the heck out, and... Now I got 500 foot fireball next round. Let's go. <laughs> uh, you have one action left, right, Gwildor? Um, no, I recalled knowledge. Oh, you recalled mm -hmm. knowledge. Okay. At end of my turn. So at the end right, of the turn, know. we're going to do a couple of things. First off, down somewhere in the... Um, down somewhere in the depths underneath the ice, you hear a powerful surge of magical crackling energy. Asius, you're going to take 8d6 points of cold damage. You get to make a reflex basic DC 27 for the 30 damage. All right, you got a 25. So Asius, take 30. Okay. All right. And of course, Asius down. Oh, I can't take it unless I oh, put I, I, on the board. I got yeah. I got to put you back on the board. There you there go. There we go. Okay. All right. And then of course there is a glowing blue bomb of cold energy underneath the ice. All right. Um, next, Asius, you are trapped in the ice uh, in the ice maze. Uh, so go ahead and make a will save to see if you have the 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 fortitude to be able to for fight your way out of this and figure. Am I able out. to drink some Bravos brew or no? No, this is during it, combat. This is during combat. It says it's my turn. Should I end my turn? Uh, no, it's the start of the next round. So technically, it is your turn. So. Oh, so just wait. I should go. Oh, son of a bee. All right. So <laughs> you, Asius, you fail and you are still trapped inside the maze and you critically failed. So even spending a hero point will not get you out of the maze. Dang it. All right. Uh, Escanor, any luck from you? You're also going to take the 12 D six points of damage. <laughs> Bob. <laughs> oh, I was like, wait, what? Uh, okay. Um, it's a will save. Oh, right? son yes. of a bee. Oh, the 31. I saw the one on the dice that was rolling. I was like, no, don't do it again to me. Escanor claws his way back to the surface. Coming, Burl and nice. Gildor and Lucky. <laughs> All right. So do you have to roll the 12d6 or is that? No, no, that's going to be turn? next turn when you come. Okay. Yeah, I just can't move. I'm just taking it. Oh, yeah, you, you can't move. You're, you're, you're definitely stuck down there. Lost. Uh all right, I'm going to roll your initiative, Escanor. All right, you are in the initiative, uh, Escanor. All right, Escanor is back on the map. I'm going to remove Asius because Asius is once again gone. Uh, but there is underneath the ice a glowing churn of magical energy, and that will be exploding up onto the surface, of course. So, um, All right, so Burl, uh, you get to go first. Remember, Burl, at the end of your turn, where you are standing right now will explode into a 20-foot radius of, of explosion. All right, how, how long is this uh, worm? Uh, at least, uh, there we go. Um, I mean, at least 40, 50, 60 feet. All right. Well, I'm going to cast, uh, elemental form and I'm going to choose air. Okay. And, uh, that gives me, uh, 10 extra hit, uh, temporary hit points, which is nice, but more importantly, correct. It gives me a, a fly speed of 80. Correct. So I'm going to fly straight up 80 feet. All right. Well, when you fly um, straight up, you only move half speed. So that's 40 feet. Oh, can I uh, can I go diagonal or is that, that is still it, gaining elevation is difficult terrain. Well, then fuck it, I'm going this way. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Asius <laughs> or uh, Burl zips across to the edge of the map. Um, 
So needless to say, for the people at home, Burl is way, way, way north. Uh, and then, uh, Burl, you cast a spell, and then you moved, uh, but um, Lucky gets one free action. He's just going to make a, uh, a straightforward attack. Yep, go for it. Uh, let's do this one. AC 33. Oof. Did it roll? Yep, it oh, just wow, took a limit. Oh, uh, that is a critical Ooh. failure. So that is definitely a miss. And then there is a massive explosion, which Lucky is just out of as the ice <laughs> uh, sort of explodes and, uh, you know, ends its thing. All right, so Burl's turn is over. Uh, the frost worm is next. Its breath is recharging. Uh, Lucky is right there in front of it. It is going to turn on to Lucky and oh, strike on. him with his... Jaws. Should have ran, on. Lucky. You should have ran. <laughs> He's trying. He, he was too loyal. He's trying to. You know, Critical oh, hits. Oh, oh no! Oh, oh lucky, lucky no! So lucky, how much no. damage would it be? Uh, it is going to be forty points of damage, uh, and he is going to be taking ongoing persistent cold damage. Lucky, is the persistent the cold damage point? just because of the uh, critical? Uh, no, it's just be, it's whenever he hits you. You take 2d6 ongoing persistent cold damage from the freezingness of Jaws. So the massive frost worm rises up out of the ice and the snow, comes over and bites down onto the badger. All right. I don't I don't know what those are. Oh, I, yeah. I clicked lucky and then I took the damage from the, the um, spell and then it rolled some dice. So I okay, know. I don't know. All right, so lucky is at 40. Uh, or sorry, 17 hit points, and he is freezing from the effect of the cold. Uh-oh. And uh, this creature has no mercy. It map finishes attack. off Lucky with a map attack. It tries to. Uh, it is a hit it with a 35. And Are you use a hero point at all for yeah, Lucky it's to just, it's, it's just a hit? Uh, it's just a hit. All right, I'll use my last hero point to turn it to a mess. All right. So or his, uh, his, last, right. his last hero point. All right. Mm -hmm. Lucky lives another day. Gotcha. Well, <laughs> Can't bring the down. All right. And then the creature is going to burrow down into the ice and make a stealth check. Oh, it's leaving. Oh, okay. Man. We're safe. Yeah. Uh, uh, he's going after Asius now. He's going to fight Asius <laughs> underneath in the maze. All right. Uh, 33. So he is, I believe, hidden to everybody. And that's just based on passive perception mm -hmm. or perception. Yeah. All right. So uh, the frost worm burrows into the ice and hides. All right. But he is not undetected. So you know where he is. You just can't see him. All right. Or shoot him because he's underground. Uh, he is considered to have concealment. Okay. So he's not actually like burrowing. And no, he, he has it's... concealment. All right. All right Gwildor. That's very important to know. I throw a fireball approximately 15 <laughs> feet behind him. <laughs> and, uh, you know, yep. Gildor got some spells back, so it's a fifth level fireball. Ooh, yeah. All yeah. right. Yes. Boom. Uh, yep. Make All right. It rain. All right. <laughs> Here we go. I'm rolling my save. I rolled a 40 critical oh, success. Huge. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's huge. <laughs> All right. So. Well, he takes no damage. Uh, well, uh, yeah, I, I had to see how much the damage was to determine if this. Is but remember, he does situation. have weakness 15 fire. I know. Right? I'm like, I want him to take damage. So I'm going to use the hero point. All right. So he is going to take half of the damage, which is 15. But 15. he has weakness 15 fire. So he's basically just yes. going to take the full 30. So And then Gwildor is going to use all of his magical powers to bring that fire damage into his bow attack. And, uh, you know, he's going to. He's he's hoping he can make this hit with uh I know it's a high shot but we're going for it because it's fire damage. That's a thirty one. That think is just misses. That is a miss. Oh, ah. So close. All right, that's the end of my turn. All right. Um, that is uh, Escanor. Yes. All right, you're back now. Remember, you can't really see this guy. He's buried into the. Uh, he's buried into the ice. Right. So like all of my. Like I, obviously, I can't attack him because I don't see him. I have to, I have to look, seek him in order to actually find him. Right? That is well, no. Uh, he's hidden, so you know exactly where he is. But even if you seek him, that's only going to make you, uh, make him. Um, oh yeah, if you critical hit, he, he will be visible to you. But okay. So, but can I do like a, uh, a demoralize on him 
if I don't have the Rick line of sight, but I kind of know where he's at. Uh, that is still, I think, a target. And so you would still have a 50% mischance. Ah, oh, jeez. Um, okay. Uh, recall knowledge. That doesn't affect anything, right? Uh, it does not, it. but it is nature. Okay. And I don't think you right. guys really have that. So I, I do, but plus yeah, 15 nature. Let's see. Mm. I'll take a shot at recalling knowledge. What was the DC for that? Uh, it is DC. Uh, ooh, DC 31. Oh boy. Let's give it a shot here. Mm. Nope. That's a definite. No. All right. Mm. I'm going to my second action, raise my shield. And then now how, how f- that bomb where Asius is at, so to speak. <clears throat> yeah. Excuse me is how far down like because like do i have to go just 20 feet linearly away from it or can i go basically right here and i would still be out of uh if you get within if you get 10 feet away i think you'll be far enough away that it it'll work okay so then i'm going to uh step over to here for my third action then all right and i have been uh booted Uh (laughs) uh-oh Yikes, Foundry is not your friend tonight. No, nope. no, it is not. Uh, yeah, you know, that's that's the wheel of destiny trying to prolong our death. <laughs> well, no, I'm not. In, I'm not logged in, and it says I am logged in. That's the problem. Oh, so that's quite interesting. Uh, uh, Refresh. Uh, no, that's what I'm saying. I I closed it all. It's oh oh, that's new. That's very new. So, uh, I'm box. Kick, yeah. Clocks. Yeah, please kick me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, that's not a clocks issue. That's just found, that's just a foundry issue. I'm sort of being facetious. Okay. Um, well, sorry. I can't sorry. kick you Do- because we're the same rank. Rip. Nice. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. New new option. All right. Let's see the if this. Watcher takes over. <laughs> All right, I'm logging in. I'm logging in as our other GM, which is Vin. <laughs> All right. Is the Watcher still able to see everything? Oh, right Watcher's now? in the game. All right, so I am now Vin, and I am back. All right. Oh, God. All right. Uh, so where are we in the initiative order? I'm about to take some damage. Yes. Okay, it, yes. It so, passed the round, so, all right, so to make a reflex save. Uh, Asius, make a reflex save as the freezing cold energy explodes around you. 45 damage of cold. Uh, my, I need I need to be... You need to put me back on the map for a second. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Asius is going to die. We're just never going to see him again. <laughs> he's, gonna be he's, frozen. he's just going to have frozen to death in the maze. Dead and gone. Right. Let me delete these really quick there, Bob. All right. Um, all right, Bob, you come back Thank just you. in time to take 45. But I, yeah. <laughs> it's a DC 27 reflex save. 22, so you fail. Bob, you take the full 45. 45, that's okay. That's okay. All right, Bob, make a will save. This is the one I want to get out of. Yes. <laughs> this is where you need to get back into the fight, man. 16, uh, 31. 31, yes. Right, yes. Right, yes. Yeah. And I will put you back where you are. All right, Bob, you are back on the map, and you are here. We need to uncover Wait. the chat once more, Dirk. Thank you. Um, all right, so uh, Asius with a 31 breaks free of the maze and is now back on the climbs to the top to find the Frostworm has not really taken that much damage. Um, well, does, he, does he see the Frostworm, though, or is the Frostworm still hidden? Oh, him? that's true. The Frostworm is hidden. All right. Uh, so, <laughs> Sorry, guys. I just uh, That's all right. That's all right. All right, Asius, uh, give me a initiative roll when you please, sir. And then, um, Burl, it's going to be your go. Oh. All right, well, easiest your last, obviously. Mm-hmm. All right, so Burl, who is all the way at the top of the map. <laughs> can you rain fireballs from that far away, oh, man? Oh, I can. Fire, 400, 400 feet. Oh, 500. 500, 500, 500 feet. It's ridiculous. Kobe! Yeah. Um, I'm going to delay until after the worm goes. Okay, I can do that. All right, so uh, Burl waits a moment and is going to go here. But Burl, when you delay, Lucky does take his uh, persistent damage. Oh, so how Lucky, long did, does he get a chance to shake it off? No, it happens first. So Lucky takes um, 
Like he takes Private eight. Privately rolled damage. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we couldn't see it. I'm set up as I'm set up as a different yeah, GM now. Uh, so Lucky takes eight damage, and then Matt. Um, let's see if Lucky yeah, shakes it off. Save doesn't need. Uh, he needed to roll a 15 or higher, but I rolled a 12, uh, oh, so yes. he did not. Uh, so he is still freezing cold. Dang. All right. So the worm is going to go next. It is going to make a sneak check. Oh, damn it. Why is this? Uh, fuck. It's all hidden. We can't see it. Yeah. It's, def- it is, uh, whatchamacallit? It's, uh, it's foundry. So it's basically like, oh, the GM's rolling a die roll. The players can never know anything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they can't be, they can't be seen. Everything you roll has to be hidden so that you can cheat at all times. Um, and I know you rolled a net one. And yeah. And he is no longer hidden. And I don't even know how to change that quickly. Mm. So, so if anybody knows how to change that quickly, uh, please In let me chat, know. please. Yeah. All right. Um, but he beats both of your perception DCs, So that's fine. Oh, okay. So both like Eskinor and me and lucky, like all three. Yeah. Oh, I, all right. Okay. And Wildor and yes. <clears throat> Uh, you guys have really low perception DCs. Uh, Eskinor's is 27. Lucky's is uh, 28. Uh, Asius's is 25. Um, 30, right? Or no, 28, 27. All right, so he emerges, and he is going to use his uh, snapping attack against Asius. His jaws rip out and attack. This, of course, will be private. Sorry. Uh, no, this one's out. Oh, that one we can see. All right. Yeah. 37. Uh, that's a critical hit. All right. Asius, you're about to take 40 damage. Okay. How far are you Persistent damage, too? Uh, And you are now persistent damaging. So Uh, as the freezing cold bites into you, the creature then snaps down its jaws against you again as the creature continues to ravage and tear into you. 34. Uh, This one's a regular hit. Yep. All right. Here comes the damage. The creature tears flesh from bone, ripping you apart. Um, And that is what the creature has. So next is Burl, who delayed. All right. Well, as a free action, or I don't know if that's the right term. Yep. Lucky can just move. Yep. Yeah. He's gonna he's gonna whimper away. Yep. And then uh, I'm gonna cast a fireball, and I should be able to do it again in such a way that it just hits the crosswind. Uh, That is correct. You can basically just kind of put it back there and it'll just kind of streak between and uh the the range is obviously not an issue so you're able to to kind of do that with no problem so from 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 far in the back the 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 fireball streaks inward and connects all right uh 23 damage but the frost worm will make his reflex save And he gets a 32, so he's going to take half damage, uh, but he's going to take then, 15 more on top of that because it is yeah, fire, yeah. so whoosh, 26 total. All right, Burl, you have one action left. Now, Burl, are you in the air or are you in the ground? Because if you're on the air, you have to spend an action to fly, uh, otherwise you crash. So, But if, uh, you, I, if, if you just like zipped along the ground, then you're fine. Yeah, I mean, I'm like a few feet off. Yeah, that, that's totally fine. But you do get one action left, Burl, so what would you like to do? Oh, um yeah i hadn't thought about it uh, let me, remember let me third my... action you could recall knowledge it is nature and you're pretty good at that actually. all right yeah let me take a let me take a recall knowledge on the old the old one all right dc 30 third, third time's the charm third time's the charm nope Dang. no it is not <laughs> this creature is an unknowable <laughs> no, is, is an unknowable uh cryptozoic being that doesn't exist only legends speak of it's this creature enigma. it's an enigma it's a chukacabra <laughs> creature all right sure. uh burl you're done gwildor all right you teleport uh you dimension door up to this rocky bluff and you are yes. looking down as uh Asius and Escanor crawl their way out of the crevasses. Uh, uh, Asius is almost brought low by the savage attacks of the Frostworm, who, despite being hit by now three fireballs, is actually still pretty good. Yeah. Well, let's see how he handles a fourth fireball. (laughs) 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 All right. Another fireball comes ripping in. And again, the creature makes a reflex save. And that's a 38, but it's not a critical success. 
just a regular pass. So we are going to deal this much damage coming in hot. Did you move? Your, did you move your mini? Why'd you Tim? move? I did not move my mini. I don't know why I ended up over there. All right, I don't know either, but I'll move you back. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, so wow. he's going to take half damage and he's going to add fifteen to this. So boom, yep. thirty-two damage total. And as then a, we are going to go for that. Uh, that one more shot. The is we can try and get that fire if we roll well. Just take another 15 damage on top. Ooh, oh, 28. Good. 28. So the arrow misses. All right. Uh, you, AZ, or Gwildor, are in turn. Oh, I accidentally went too fast past you. Well, it's because it, I clicked it at the same time. You did click it at the same yes. time. So I that is that is uh, my bad. All right, Escanor, it's actually your turn. Yes. All right. So. All right, Nick. First, the first, uh, no, no. The, first action, I'm going to raise I was my say, shield. The, uh, the frost worm is a little beat up from multiple fireballs, but still seems to be pretty strong. Otherwise, I'm going to step over here. Okay, uh, that is that is a ten foot movement. Sh- stride, stride. Sorry, stride, stride. And okay. then I'm going to hang on one second. Target Asius, and I probably am going to screw this up, so I apologize. But I'm going to use my third level heal on Asius. Um, because he's right because I'm right next to him. Then all right, so yep. it's a one act one action. Uh, spell has a range of touch, so I get to heal him then. Yes, so it's three d eight. So you can just hit the three d eight. So then I hit. All right, it is only for sixteen. All right, Asius, uh, um, it's your turn, buddy. Uh, okay. Oh, and no, remember, eight, remember, Asius, at the end of your turn, you're gonna take two d eight cold. Okay. We are going to rage. Okay. Rah! Raging away. Get on. Yep. All right. Got the rage effect now. Then we're going to sudden charge. Yep. Uh, that seems pretty reasonable. To get to the flank. Yep. <laughs> and then bring down destiny. All right. Now, this should automatically flank him. Oh! Yeah. Give me that critical. Is that critical without the tier point or no? It's not. It is not a critical. But you know what we doing. <laughs> yeah. Asius finally getting out of the maze. has been waiting this whole time to attack this frost worm. Bringing down Destiny is all he's thought about for the past three turns. <laughs> and he brings it down. Critical hit. He Can a worm out of the maze the first turn? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he just knocks it down to the ground. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for you there, buddy. Yep. I was just taking my hero point away. All right. Uh, 50. That is the critical damage. Yep. All right. So 58 Woo. damage, and the frost worm is struck. It's good to have uh, a single target DPS back. Uh, Asius. <laughs> uh, so that was a rage, and so that was yep. all three of your actions. Asius, yep. uh, you were going to take 2d8 points of f- cold damage and then make a DC 15 flat check on top of this. All right. So I take the damage. Yep. And then I do the flat, uh, just a DC 20. Yep. Okay. Uh, DC 15. Hey, 15? you're no longer persistent, so you can take End that off. Turn. All, right. Okay. All right. The frost worm turns to you and immediately attacks you. <laughs> okay. Uh, here we go. He's going to miss. <laughs> All that nat one. Uh, no, it, it's it, a hit. It's it, a hit. It's still a hit. <laughs> it's still a hit. <laughs> um. All right. The frost worm brings up its massive body and its huge pincer like mandibles and slashes into the barbarian and barbarian. You take 27 damage. All right. And once again, you are taking the persistent cold damage. All right. And then the creature will right back. (laughs) The creature will bite you again. With you guessed it. A map attack. Okay. This one we might be using a uh, dot. Uh, oh. 29. It's a hit. All right. Quickly, uh, quickly, he dodges out of the way, seeing this attack once before, pulling out that heroic action because he chooses life. <laughs> All right. That, uh, what, uh, how many, how many hero points do you have left, Bob? I have three. Gotcha. All right. Yep. Burl, your go, buddy. All right. Uh, so I'm going to use a uh, quicken casting. So that uh, I can, well, I guess I'll do, I'll do a fireball first. Okay. Um, yeah. How do I, yeah. Okay. So let's do a fireball first. Yep. And. Do we still have a good shot for that from your current position? 
to see like yeah i mean i could either oh i, was, I wasn't even thinking that side but yeah yeah, on right the other side of it. One works, yeah. Okay, that, yeah. all right, all right, right there. All right. Yeah, yeah. It's right next to me. I feel the heat, man. Still good. <laughs> yeah, that's that's like some danger close. Like you're just dropping these fireballs. Doing on the fly physics and geometry to make sure. <laughs> Get that windage right, man. Don't oh, screw it up. On. We need this one, Burl. All right, another massive fireball. I think this is the sixth fireball this fight. Uh, it comes so. streaking yeah. in. Uh, the creature is frightened, uh, too. Actually, it should be frightened one. Uh, because it ended its turn. And uh, here we go. Makes a save against the reflex save. Oh. Oh, it's a fail. Hey, finally failed one. Chat wants to remind us to not forget about persistent damage. Yep. Um, or I took I mine know. last turn. I think it's uh, Lucky that has it. Oh, right Lucky. Now. Okay, lucky. yep. Yep, yep. Yeah. And Burl's going to, or he's going to take it at the end of the turn. So, okay. Um, Matt. Uh, he failed the save, so did you roll damage? Oh, you did. Okay. Yeah, 26. All right, plus 15. Plus 15. Boom, 41. That's a good one. All right. Nice. Uh, and then uh, Lucky's now, you, just going to... You have one action left, Matt. Yes. Um, well, uh, so when I I can I can heal Lucky, but I have to be... I, I imagine I have to be touching him. Um, I don't know what the... It, it's probably in the, in the, is the range of that. Uh, what what are you going to heal him with? Your staff? Uh, that's a good point. I was thinking, I think there's a feat that I have, but... No, I don't think this... you took that feat. I think you took the one that lets you trance into him instead. Oh, yeah. Uh, so staff, uh, it doesn't tell me the, the range. Uh, it's because it's a um, uh, it's a heal spell. So it's either touch or 30 feet. You, yeah, two actions is 30 feet. But two actions is 30 feet. Oh, right. Uh, can I use quicken on that? No. Or is that that that's because it only spells for your spell slot? Yeah, yeah. Um well I will just uh I will move uh next to Lucky to, to get ready. All right. Uh that was a double move. You can't move quite that far. He's flying. Uh, oh, you're you're uh, extremely flying. fast. All right. <laughs> Lucky at the end of his turn. Yeah, he, Lucky's not gonna take an action. He's just gonna He takes 13 damage and Lucky oh, no. is dying. Dun dun no. dun Save the Badger! Dun, dun. It, it's victory no matter what I do at this point. All right, Burl's Shout turn. I would like uh, to remind you, Derek, that you probably have your breath weapon back. Um, actually, I think I get it back this round. So yes, that is true. Um, Gwildor. Hmm, good to know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remembered it was this round anyway. I was, I yes. was tracking it. Um, yes, we are currently in round four. He rolled a four, which means it takes four rounds. So you get it back at round five. But my encounter tracker is telling me that it is currently round four. So I will get it back next turn. That'd yep. be plus four rounds. All right, All right Gwild Gildor, what's it gonna be? All right. Well, G Gildor's, uh he is going to get down on one knee. <laughs> right, well, he's gonna cast true strike. Okay. And then he's gonna do an archer's aim. Okay. Uh with fortune. So we and we're gonna try and shoot this guy. This ignores like all his junk. Yep. Gives me a slightly higher attack bonus. And we got a 34 to hit. That is a hit. Hey, all right. So we're gonna do this much damage here it comes all right <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay that was good good oh, good fun. turn good night everybody good, good night, night everybody <laughs> have a good one all right Escanor, it's your turn all right um first action i will raise my shield yep second action i'm going to invoke my uh litany of protection Okay. Um, do you, you don't want me to click that or you want me no, to click No, I do that? not need you to click it. All right. Um, third action, I am actually going to aid Azius's attack. Gotcha. And I'm going to uh, hold it down uh, in place uh, as he swings upon it, destiny, in order to crush it and destroy this being. Got okay. it. Um, well, I got a 27, so I passed uh, the save. Um, which means he got a success. So the first time he does attack, he will take 5d6 cold. Good damage, but only on the first attack. But you are preparing to aid, and it is Azius, your turn. All right. Azius, seeing his his companion holding down, <laughs> raises up Azius to the sky. Azius. Or Destiny <laughs> to the sky. <laughs> raises himself. All right. Well, the good news is, Nick, uh, whether you aid or not, it's just a hit. It's not going to be a critical hit. Actually, Nick. Well, no, I, I gave, I, that was me rolling to aid. Him. Oh, that's that you rolled aid. to aid. Oh, okay. I, I thought. Giving, nice. So that's a plus three. All right. Aid, so, right? Eskinor, how do you aid? What does this look like? You guys like are said, teaming I'm up. Hold, again. I'm holding him down with my shield, <laughs> bracing him, and swing at him. Just give him all you got. <laughs> 
bring down the hammer from the heavens. Hmm. It's a 38. 38. It's a nice. hit. It's just a hit. 30. Do we think it's going to kill him? <laughs> ah, I'm going to roll, go. man. As yeah. a hero point it and make it a crit and just end it. All right. You're right about the die. Lightning crackles from the shock rune as the hero point ends. <laughs> His life, hopefully, well, hopefully, <laughs> not not Azius, not <laughs> oh no. yeah, seven, oh, yeah, yeah seventy four does it, yeah for sure. <laughs> okay, oh, good. All right, and then Azius, you take death damage. No, uh, nine points of damage. Still alive. All right, <laughs> I'm at four. All right, well, we can heal you. That's fine. Like... All right, oh. that was a rough one for Azius. Uh, that is correct. Yeah. But, uh, you guys managed to overcome the challenge. That was a rough one for everybody. You know, two <laughs> people started mazed. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what to yeah, tell that, you. That wasn't, it. <laughs> don't when, maze when me, you, bro. When you yeah. drop the two sort of tank characters and oh. it's just a big giant. Well, you know, the thing is, it was not as bad as it could have been because, uh, Tim dimension doored and you turned into an air elemental and flew 90 feet away. So, yeah, but it, it was not so uh, good for Lucky. No, we'll, we'll it was, save Lucky. No. Can you save Lucky, or do you need me to save Lucky? Well, here's uh, the problem. Oh no, you guys don't have infinite time like you usually do. Mm. Now, here's I the have thing: a couple of healing spells, though. But that that is true. That can happen very quickly. Um, but in terms of like taking ten minutes to make checks or get back your focus points, that is something that you do have to be cognizant of, and you may okay. not have that much time. Um, certainly, you can spend a resolve point as always to get back all your stamina the moment we are no longer in combat and yeah. we are no longer in combat. I'm gonna certainly do that. yeah. Use that okay. resolve point. Take a breather, <laughs> and then I will use. He steadies himself. Bring everybody Thank in here. here. Yep. <laughs> Seeing the party reunited. I did not want to figure out how to move my character around this mountain. That's that's, <laughs> no that's all good. And then uh, I'd like to use a stack of healing for the first time ever. How do I actually <laughs> do that? <laughs> uh, I well, love it. Yeah. Love it. So, Matt, uh, the thing about your staff of healing is you can cast up to level five spells. So it gets five charges for free every day. Um, and you can use one of those charges to cast a level one heal because this is a very low level heal staff. Um, and so what you can do is you can just hit cast heal. Um, and, uh, it'll, where, where do I hit cast? Heal? Oh, it's, it's in your, it's in your spells menu. Uh, if you click into your character sheet and you click on the little wand symbol, the very first thing you'll see is a gigantic section that says staff of healing. All right, all right. Um, and then, um, yeah. All right. So, uh, Azius, you're very low on hit points. Um, Lucky have, is very low on hit points as well. I was like, I have one focus point readily available right now. I can heal you, Azius, for 30 uh, HP with lay of hands. Oh, you don't have to attack with your heal, Matt. I'm just trying, there's <laughs> no, I'm just trying to see where I can actually cast it. There's, uh, no, there's a button uh, that says cast. To, uh, yeah. Negative. Interesting. Uh, I, I just brought it up on your character oh, sheet. Oh, stabilize. What? Ignore That's stabilize. stabilize. All right. it, it's stabilize. it's heal. There we go. Yeah. All right. Um, so Matt, um, what you're gonna do is uh, it's D8 plus eight every time you heal uh, a charge. So we'll just say that each charge is uh, we'll just say each charge is 14 hit points that you okay. can bring back to him. So if you want to heal him a couple times, that'll take up a couple charges. You don't have to go through the rolling the dice each time. Okay. Uh, and then Nick, what are you doing? Like I said, I can do, I have one more focus point that I can use. Fine, uh, that's to, great. To heal Azeus. Well, what are you 30. doing? Oh, for 30. Okay. So, Azeus, you are healed for 30. Thank you, it. sir. All right. Hit, hit points. All right. Yes. And then, Eskinor, you have no focus points left. Right now, correct. Okay. All now right. I'm going to use uh, two resolve to get back uh, to... Well, it's the it's, you get five spell levels each time you use a result. So you get back one uh, fifth level spell, or you could get back a three and a two, or you could get back, get back a four a, and a one. A four and a so I'm going to use two resolve to get back a five and a four. That's fine. Well, I'm going to go with two four because I think we're uh, <laughs> more likely to need fireball than I don't have a fifth <laughs> level. Uh, there we go. Okay. All right. So. Now, does my persistent damage go away? Do I have to like make N some more saves? No, it, it's the end of the fight. It's I think it's it's, oh, okay. it's you shake it off. You, you're able to shake it off. So okay. Um. So that is, as they say, uh, the end of that, and leaving you now, um, very very close to your goal, cool which is bar. at the end of the fight. 
sees how much damage everyone took. He looks at his crossbow. <laughs> he just throws it to the ground off the mountain <laughs> and it there to renounce archery for all time. It's clearly <laughs> not strong enough to survive <laughs> in this world. So he's going next time he has a chance, rededicate his life to something else <laughs> <laughs> outside of wizardry. Uh, that checks out, Tim. Um, yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, Pathfinder 2, not very uh, not very nice with, uh, with some of that stuff. No. All right. Uh, for some odd reason, these things uh, did not want... Oh, oh, I know what happened. I'm on the wrong... You guys, yeah, we were, yeah, you guys, no, you guys were up. You guys were up here. You know that. I'm sorry. You, I was taking you guys back to the bottom of the mountain. Oh, yeah. All right, a, guys. Uh, there we go. It was the worm wheel, tunnel. Wheel of Wheel of Pain had to say, "Start over." <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> wheel right. of Pain. Well, Restart the current. Play. The good news <laughs> is you guys were being hunted. Uh, but that is this is the second half of the second day, and you guys are very very close. And the uh, frost worm, which has been hunting you now for the better part of the last day, sprang its ambush, including its devilish double maze crevasse uh, but you guys were able to escape from that and the spellcasters were able to avoid instantaneous death through the good use of some high level spells so uh good job spellcasters not dying um your morale has been boosted your warmth is no longer an issue thanks to the help of uh, pickwick and uh your provisions have been maintained due to good checks and create ample create foods and time is the only thing that may be running short but you are very close so it is the afternoon of the second day, and you each have an action. I used my second action for to cast those fireballs. Okay, uh, so I am done for the day. <laughs> All right, sounds good. All right, then there are three actions. I'm going to. I mean, no, I, I, we're not really going to be hurt by the cold anymore, so I don't really need to. That is look. correct. Yeah, I, so mean... I don't need to really find a spot for us to hide in. So, um. I'm going to once again turn to uh, I am a day and uh, do a religion check to make sure and to guide us along our path to make sure we're going the correct right. way. I was going to say DC 32. I am a day says I help those who help themselves, but because <laughs> uh, that's the second time you've turned to her, but you rolled a 33. Uh, I prayed and, extra hard, to but my, you are apparently deity. You are apparently such a devout, <laughs> uh, a devout man that uh, you were able to, uh, uh, able to break through and uh, reach the uh, <laughs> reach, reach, reach your deity regardless. And she bestows upon you uh, some information about it. And uh, bloop. goes the character sheets. <laughs> is that what, is that what does it? Yeah. Oh, okay. You just take that one. And my All right. one away. Don't use the Lancer clocks module people for, for clocks. It apparently breaks everything. So <laughs> you had the right intent though. I tried, I, you know, I tried to do yeah. something different, try to do some things, but, all right. All right. Asius takes a step up on each ledge. Yeah, have you trying, you haven't oh passed God, one here yet. we go. And trying to grab his his fellow comrades' hands and you pull them up on each ledge of this mountain pass and his athletics check is coming up. And uh don't worry guys, this time I got it. All yeah, right. this time. He's gonna throw us off a cliff. Hey, I got oh, it this time. Oh, I, thought it, right. I thought it was a nat one, but he ends it with a critical hit. A critical Finally. hit. Finally. Critical. Critical nice. hit. All right. After long last, um, you guys arrive at the edge of a vast ravine. A massive space that stretches out to either side. And all around you are the signs and detritus of a thriving ogre colony. In fact, actually, as you look forward, there is a massive entryway. A huge cleft right into the granite face of the rock. And standing guard on either side of it, you can see two massive ogres. But these are not the ogres that you have fought time and time again. No, yeah, these those are all dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, we've never fought them time and time again. We fought them all once. <laughs> um, no, these character, these ogres um, are heavily armored Ooh. with massive shields, freshly forged, bearing the mark of the Sihedron rune with massive war hammers and full plate to boot. 
these massively armored and armed ogres stand resolutely as the wind blows. You can actually see that there are maybe dozens of goblins and other small uh, creatures, maybe like um, uh, uh, like hobgoblins and goblins kind of scurrying around uh, sort of as you guys kind of approach. And some of them are like fleeing back into the uh, into the uh, massive, huge entrance way into this uh, ravine or cavern. And your eyes are drawn to what appear to be the bones of some massive ancient beast slain who knows how long ago its bones now almost petrified and sort of arranged in sort of an archway like the rib cage around it well it looks like you got uh got a tip from steven and on the seventh Thank day you. uh there was something i don't know what he says there um pain oh on the seventh day there was pain all right <laughs> um as you stand here before you there is a shimmering energy in front of you and a spectral form suddenly oh, appears what the heck? Oh, snap. and a massive shimmering illusory shape of a gigantic overwhelming massive stone giant stands before you and uh, gets deleted by Fuck. Clock, the clock. and he becomes clock. a clock. <laughs> the most Your terrifying. Time is up. <laughs> what a stupid, 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 well, stupid. Good thing none of us are Captain Hook. Uh, we're not really stupid, clocks. stupid, right. stupid module. Um, all right, let's bring him back. All right, we brought him back. I mean, I'm fine with him being dead. That's, that's all right. <laughs> oh, he's not dead. He just got turned into a clock. That's the difference. Oh. Um, right oh, we could smash clock. that face in pretty easily. Uh -huh. hey. That was that was great. Um, all right, he should be back. All right, let's bring in the big man. All right, um, there he is. Oh, oh, a, he's, got a, he's got a name. A spectral image appears before you of the largest giant you have ever seen. He's not just large; he's actually huge. Um, and. Uh, the massive creature is encased in sort of dark armor with sihedron runes upon it. And he has a massive sort of stone or metal war hammer as the illusionary form appears before you. Halt. You can go no further. All right. T <laughs> wow. talk, talk me into it. Good. Yes. I am Why glad. I, I am glad that you can see to reason. It would Who be a sh you? it would be a shame to kill you now, before the great war has begun. Look, just just because we share seventy five percent of the same letters doesn't mean that I'm going to take crap from you. Yes, uh, Burl. I have learned of you. It is an oh, honor yeah? to meet you. Huh. It is an honor to meet you all. I oh, am Burl. Barl Breakbones, servant of Mokmorian, and I serve the great eye of Avarice, which will come to reclaim our giant's destiny. And I am afraid you cannot come any further. Why not? You have caused us too many troubles already. And yet it is a pity, for you seem to be very strong, and I would love to test myself against you. You could join our squad. So why don't you? Is that is that a is that a challenge? Oh, a challenge? Of course. Unfortunately, I am a, a lieutenant, a general in the armies that are to come, <laughs> and I would be a fool if I did not realize that the danger that you all here represented. No, to fight you would be foolish. Thus, I have allow, relied on Lucretia's magic to send this magical illusion to you so that we may have words and perhaps avoid unnecessary conflict. I've never seen a, such a large coward before who can't come and face us alone, <laughs> but instead sends a projection of himself. What you call cowardice, I call duty. <laughs> I serve the greatest most powerful stone giant in a thousand years, who will return the giants, the people of the plateau, to their rightful place as rulers of Varicia. 
You humans and dwarves, you scabbous gnomes and elves, live amongst the ruins of my people's once great cities and monuments. My people cast out for a thousand years or more, left to fend for ourselves, scratching a living off of rocks, while you live down in the lush and fertile valleys, living in the mere shadow of our greatness. And now sure. one... Ha- and now one has returned, one who would restore the people of the plateau to their place of preeminence and victory. Huh. It is a shame that my father could not see the vision. Alas, that I had to kill him to secure the rights to my tribe so that we could join Mokmurian's great conquest. Did you sneak up on him while he was hiding behind a projection too? <laughs> no. <laughs> I fought him barehanded until I crushed his skull between my hands. Then, using the power granted to me by Mokmurian, I reanimated his body as a thrall to be used as a slave in our conquests. For the dark arts have come easily to me. I possess now a greater skill and power than any mere stone giant could ever possess. I command the powers of magic. And while Mokmurian tried to teach me the powers of alteration and conjuration, it found that they were difficult for me. But the dead, well, the dead always did seem to listen to me, or at least they came easily when I was around. And so it worked out pretty sweet. I kill them and then I raise them. It's really actually quite sweet and awesome. <laughs> you it does giants. sound quite convenient. I think I'll look into it with your corpse. <laughs> when uh, we raise your entire say, you, to the ground. You, uh, boat, stronghold, you boast to be so it is. strong, and yet you still only show us an illusion of yourself. I do you, not need to fight you. But you, you don't want to fight us. No, like. I do not want to fight you. Yeah, but see, look, you giants are a the plague. To come back. You guys, you giants are a plague on this earth and the Strong Forge family. A plague? The giants. Yes. <laughs> Under ancient Thassalon, the giants knew only conquest. And after the Rune Lords fell, what did your people do to us? You drove us from our lands. You and created. I will keep driving you farther well, so there's no one left. He lowers his hammer at you. Dwarf, I lower mine back at him. Dwarf, <laughs> I wish I do not. Dwarf, I will give you your death, but I do not wish to give it to you. Where does this vengeance in your heart come from? Have you no honor? Have you no respect for your foe? I must the admit, honor is I, killing you, for you and your kind have slain my family and the Strong Forge enough. Well, then they were weak and they deserved their fate. Would you not agree? Yeah, just like your your Damn, hundred makes years sense of there. generations. <laughs> <laughs> weak, weak, like your generations of of of, of giants who've lost their lands. Is yeah, to us, yeah, you know? yeah, Lots bro, of weakness. Your your painful words do ring true in my ears. My people had given up the ways of war and conquest to live as nomads, to live in peaceful nomadic herdsman life. But Mokmorian has returned from the great eye, and he has shown us <laughs> he has shown us that the great lord is once again rising to the north. The spires of Zin Shalas will once again resound with the words of a rune lord. And soon, whether through his ascension or through the marshalling of the greatest giant army that has been seen in some 2,000 years, will the might of ancient Thassalon be felt again, and Varicia will know its doom when myself and my kin of hundreds, nay thousands, lays waste and siege to your lands. <laughs> the, ba- the battle will be joyous and gloriful. Only, the, only those who resist, Master of Iomede. Only those who resist will be slain. The rest will be taken for chattel to allow to be allowed to serve in the great empire that will be forged from the ashes of yours. For is that not the way of empires to rule out the old and to build the new? Yes, but you claim to have been peaceful people. You have been claimed to have been driven here to become peaceful. Had you been truly peaceful, you could have also joined the civilization, not just go and reap your your anger and hatred towards it to get to this point of just war and death and destruction. Yeah. Your pitiful words, save them for the weak and the pitiful. I, I do not need for them. You. <laughs> yes. My P my father and my grandfather and his father before him chose the way of peace and look what it got them. No, I have chosen what every giant was born to do. 
to rule, to it conquest. Not rule when you will be dead for <laughs> your your, path your of idle death, threats. Death and destruction only goes towards your own. I thought we could have a conversation here, and yet you continue to hurl insults while I only show you respect. It is not insults. It is merely explaining the truth. You go to war. Death is inevitable. Fine. It just happens to be your death that is going to be the one who's going to be inevitable. Fine. Let's say you kill me. Then what? <laughs> if you fight me and you kill me and you stop us here, what are you going to do about the 10 other locations? <laughs> what are you going to do about the giant raiding party that is even now <laughs> descending or preparing to descend upon your precious town of Sandpoint? <laughs> That's not Sandpoint. Uh, you have no uh, hope. Vilic, Any... is, Vilic is back at Sandpoint. Uh, he's like level. <laughs> he's like level five. He has no chance. Nah, he has no, been. A, he Vil has been. Vilic is actually level nine. <laughs> Mark Morian must. It's ironic that you are here. Mark Morian must have found something quite interesting in your town to have sent such a large force. But it matters not, for whether you die here or I die here. You cannot possibly hope to beat Mark Murian, and you certainly cannot forestall the rise of the Rune Lords. Uh, we will we'll stop see it. About it is that. only just that we do so. Have you not dang, felt dang, it, dang. Master I Paladin? I have felt it. There is a man. great evil that dwells in the land that and seeks I shall your destroy death. That evil. And once that power is unleashed, you have challenged me and you have disturbed my honor. And I promise you that when you fight me, it will not be me that you are fighting. It will be me. An and it will be you? and it will be <laughs> it will be the full might of the magic of Mokmurian and the great power that he I will not name that he serves that will descend upon you. The pain shall fall upon you like the rolling of wheels, and you will know only <laughs> death. I do not turn away from a duel. Your duel has challenge has been accepted, and I will bring you to your end. Very well, Master Paladin. When you if you manage to get to me, I welcome your challenge. In the meantime, I am afraid that my ogres must engage you and try to do their best. Of course, I have no doubt that they will fail. The spectral <laughs> illusion seems to sort of like turn and starts to start to waver. But I thought that perhaps I could offer you a more worthy challenge. <laughs> For next time, until next time, I look forward to our meeting. In the meantime... Enjoy. The spectral image fades. And then there is a stirring in the air, a frigid cold that has goes beyond the temperature, a chilling of the soul. There is a rattle in the stones surrounding the cave entrance. And then you realize it is not the stones that are beginning to twitch and move, but the bones. The, the bones begin rattling over one another and spinning together and soon begin sort of amassing and turning. And in with horror from a rising pile of bones rises out a skeletal monstrosity from the Battle Zoo Bestiary. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. <sure. laughs> I thought it was going to be a bone naga. I was super uh, pumped. No, in fact, it is not a bone naga. Instead, it is a massive draconic creature uh, uh, made and composed of yeah. bones. And it is uh, it rises up and with a powerful keening scream, the uh, the creature sort of uh, comes to unlife as its <laughs> massive body arises and it lets out a horrible scream as the dark necromancy of borrow break bones animates the skeletal monstrosity to guard the entrance to the Hook Mountain clan hold. Ooh. And that. is where we're going to leave it for this time. Oh. <laughs> All right. Um, so. Leave it a bone for next week, eh? Yeah, yeah. I, I, for one, am glad we're fighting undead. Because, yeah, <laughs> searing, searing light is uh, going to be some yeah, good news. Yeah, buddy. So. The, it's your signature. <laughs> the group, the knights, have successfully journeyed to the top of Hook Mountain and found there the great cleft in the earth where the Greek clan, now ruled by Borrow Breakbones, servant of Mokmurian and of the great Eye of Avarice. Um, however, Borrow is no ordinary stone giant. He is a cunning and proficient warrior 
and a horrible and terrible necromancer to boot. And then to supplement his two iron, uh, iron hide ogre bodyguards, he has summoned forth the huge bestial, the zoo like skeletal <laughs> monstrosity to, uh, to, uh, guard and defend against the party who now have no choice, but to try to fight and engage these for time is now of the essence. The giants are on the move and apparently have even launched a raiding party against Sandpoint. Yeah. We're gonna so take this place out quick and get we back are ending the session with two villain points and I am going to roll those in right over into, uh, into this fight. When we start off next time, um, this is the end of the adventure. Uh, the, not this, not this fight, but this part of the adventure. And that means there is, there's no, there's no holes bar. We're not ending this adventure with any points in the tank. So, um, we are going to be making this very, very difficult. All of these fights are going to be severe or extreme baseline. <laughs> so baseline, baseline before so, the wheel of pain, before the is. wheel of pain. Um, and as I said before, there's a couple uh rolls on the wheel of pain that could instantly wipe the party. So these are situations where, uh, you know, I, I, I can't, can't quite honestly, um, can't quite honestly say what's going to happen, but it, it'll be really interesting. And if we, you know, end our campaign and I destroy it for the sake of of the lulls and the the pain, well, then, then so much the better. And I'm happy that everybody was along with us for the. <laughs> We've destroyed uh, campaigns for a while. We've destroyed Let's the campaign. For a while. <laughs> um, but remember, campaigns while they were in the theoretical stage. Right. <laughs> but remember, uh, gentlemen, there is really no coming back. I mean, uh, if you are unable to make progress against it, these are no unorganized rabble. They are going to try to hunt you down, and you're not exactly in a uh, exactly unforeboding location uh, so the, the quick and easy rest is not something that you are going to find here so you are going to have to rely on your resolve and your heroism uh, to in order to keep your uh, spells refilled your stamina high and of course to uh, make sure that you have an, the ability to even overcome uh, some of these challenges uh, I do appreciate GM Scott who chatted <laughs> well it is called the name of the adventure is the hook mountain massacre we were never really sure what it was referring to uh, uh maybe now we know uh, yeah, it's a massacre of these giants and ogres and now this bone dragon thing so yeah. Yeah, that's what we're gonna be massacring um, over. and of course i was very tickled uh had to pull out the skeletal monstrosity uh from the battle zoo bestiary uh if you've caught uh, our review uh and our patreon review of it uh you know that was pretty awesome um so I want to say thank you to everybody uh, for joining in. Boys, thank you. Um, I, I do have one announcement, which I'm going to put into the Patreon, but um, I, I'd hoped to get it, but we were sitting here playing here, and I was trying to fix stuff while we were thinking. Apologize about the technical challenges tonight, but um, good news. Um, we got, it's, not, it's not, not a huge thing, but I am announcing. Um, we got in our first line of Knights of Last Call merch, and it is a high-quality vinyl uh, sticker of the Knights of Last Call logo, you know, like the All kind, right. pe you know, like the kind nice. people put on like the back of their laptops or on like their thermos bottles or whatever. Um, nice. And uh, we are going to be sending those out to our knights, champions, and heroes. Uh, anybody who is a knight, champion, or hero of our of our Patreon, uh, if we're gonna get, if we can get your address, uh, we're gonna send you a plain white envelope with a. a free sticker of, from our very first line of, of, of Knights uh, merch, uh, just as kind of send out some, start sending out some stickers. Um, and just as a thank you for being a part of the Patreon. And, um, you know, we're, we're really looking forward to this month uh, rolling out our Northern Reaches mega game and uh, continuing to produce content. We're going to bring back night school. Bob and I are supposed to film it Wednesday. Um, and we're going to bring back combat and tactics too. That is the plan. So we're going to get back to some of our, of our older content. Now that the live stream is in a little bit more of a stable place. Um, again, I apologize, ben, 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 thank you for the, the handling, the technical issues, you know, Hey, listen, it, it happens. Um, you know, I wish we had a $35,000 production budget like critical role, but we do not. So I will say that I think once we get back live in the studio, I think this will be even, um, even better. Um, Absolutely. because then we won't be relying on foundry. Um, and that'll solve a lot of our issues. Plus we get to use all their cool minis because I mean, this is not really a surprise, but so years ago, Paizo released an entire miniature line, pre-painted minis for rise of the rune Lords. And they recently just like cracked open the vault and resold it. Um, I think it was like $180 to buy the whole set plus like 20 or 30, $40 tip shipping. 
and they just redid and I bought that. So, um, yeah. so, so nice. I'm actually going to have like the whole line of custom miniatures that are specifically designed for this campaign. Uh, and I did that because I'm really excited to get back in person with these guys. Um, COVID Can't wait to die next episode. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> well, he didn't, he, we didn't buy us models. All right, uh, that's the true. monsters. That's, that's true. That's true. true. You know, I've always wanted to own them anyways, so I guess that's uh, you know this is fine. But um, uh, well, if we make it through this adventure, uh, then we'll have some fun things. But um. Uh, lo really looking forward to, uh, you know, COVID rates are going way back down. And I think uh, hopefully um, by the time, I think by the time we wrap up this adventure um, and maybe into uh, into the next uh, April or something like that, we'll probably be able to, to make our way back into live. And certainly want to thank everybody who supported us um, today. Uh, that was really awesome, really incredible. We had a lot of fun with that. And as long as you guys continue to keep supporting these live streams and these APs, uh, we're going to keep doing them and we're going to keep trying to find ways to improve them. And of course, if you want to be part of the conversation, check out our uh, Patreon, join the discord and, um, you know, let us know always I'm open to criticisms. You know, what can we do better? What can we make it more fun? Uh, how can we make this whole experience a better time? What about part of the after party? Oh, Ooh. that's completely correct. How could I forget? I this was wondering our, if that was here or on discord. This <laughs> is our first time for our after party. All right. So here's what we're going to do. It's almost 11 o'clock. We're going to end this here, but we are going to stay on the Zoom call. If you are a champion or a hero in the Knights of Last Call Patreon, we're going to be sending out that Zoom link just in about a minute. And you're going to be able to hop into our Zoom call that we have sort of our post uh uh, our post session sort of breakdown, what we're calling the after party, where we kind of talk about the session and sort of, you know, shoot the shit. So uh, if you're a champion or you're a hero and you want to hop on, uh, feel free to do so. If you have a, you know, if you just want to join with your audio, you don't need a camera or anything like that, but feel free to do so if you want to. Um, and we'll, uh, we look forward to seeing everybody there. So I don't know. I don't get anything else. Anybody else? Nope. Can't wait to see you. Yep. All right. So yeah, thank you all for everything. Yeah. Really thank you for everybody. It. And, you know, we'll see you next time for episode 32 of, uh, of Nights. What are we? What are we again? What are we called? The Knights of Last Call. Oh, that's right. We're the we're the Knights of Last Call. <laughs>